Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, thank you, Ria, for uh, joining tonight. Appreciate your time. Let's take you through, um, through this masterclass quickly, and then we'll be joined by some, uh, some of the members of this of the Heart of Letting Go Club uh, in an hour or so. So the full title of this is How to Master the Heart of Letting Go of any stressful thought or emotion in minutes and find authentic happiness, fulfilling flow, higher purpose and ecstatic well-being to thrive through adversity in these turbulent times by tapping into the transformative power of seven ancient spiritual techniques. So quite a mouthful, but I'm going to unpack all of that for you. If you have any questions at any point, because it's uh, just the two of us, uh, just uh, feel free to ask. So just firstly, I'm going to guide you through a simple breathing exercise um, to help you just relax and uh, be present. So you just put your phone on mute or silent. I'll just get you into, into the right frame of mind for this. So sitting comfortably, each shoulder width apart. Cup your hands in your lap. Just keep your back straight. Close your eyes and start off by taking a nice deep breath in through the nose. And notice as you do that, that the stomach is rising first. So that's very important. Stomach rises, then the chest rises. And the second phase of the inhale. And then third phase, you feel it rising into the upper chest. And then sense of energy rising up into the head. The pause at the top of the inhale briefly. Just observe what's going on in your mind, any thoughts, any emotions, any sensations in the body, particularly anything that feels negative. It's negative, it's limiting, it's contracted, it's constricting. Just observe that thought, Observe the emotion, observe the sensation of it, and with the help of your breath, you're just going to let it go. So whatever that feeling is, it's not pleasant, you can imagine that you're blowing it away like a dark cloud, the breeze of your breath. So as you exhale, Just blowing it all away, have a sense of letting it go. And visualize dark clouds just being blown away or black smoke leaving your mouth. And pull the low stomach into the spine. Smell the last remaining air out. Rest here for a few moments in the gap between breaths. Notice that there's some stillness and peace arising in your mind. Now breathe in again. So a nice deep inhale breath in through the nose. Notice how the stomach rises first and the chest. Draw the energy. Feel this warm wave of energy rising up the spine into your heart center and then into the crown of your head. It's a maximal inhale breath. And you can add a little twist to this breath. Just imagine that you're breathing light in. It's a nice golden white light flowing into every pore, every cell of your body. And this light's very healing. So wherever the areas of darkness, tension, pain, just imagine you bringing it into those areas. And it's just soothing them. There's a sense of lightness as well as a visual sense of light. If you don't visualize well, just feel a sense of lightness. 
in those areas in your entire body, in your mind, it's every part of your body, every cell of your body, every part of your mind is in the light. Just imagine that light infusing you, you breathe it into every pore, every cell of your body. Pause here at the top of the inhale, smile. Feel a sense of lightness encompassing you. If there are any dark thoughts, any stresses, strains from the day, little bits of anxiety, maybe a bit of irritation, you're feeling a bit weary, just observe all of that. And as you exhale, blowing it all out, letting it all go. Blow it all away with the breeze of your breath. Low stomach into the spine. All the last remaining air out. Notice the peace and the stillness that arise when you let go. They naturally just arise in your mind. There's more peace, there's more stillness. Now you just breathe in and out through your nose. So breathing in, breathing out. Just get into rhythm, just do 20 breaths in your own time. So you breathe in, you notice the stomach rise, the chest rise. Notice the subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. And you exhale, let the air flow out. All the nostrils and stomach and chest just subside back in. And just getting into a nice rhythm, breathing in and breathing out. It's nice, smooth, flowing inhales and exhales. The one just flows into another. And from each exhale, you flow into the next inhale. And you focus your attention on your nose. So what's happening in your nostrils? Notice subtle sensation arising in your nostrils. As the air flows in and the air flows out. Notice the touch of your breath in the area between, below your nose, between your nose and your upper lip. Touch of the breath there. And that brings you into the present moment. Just by focusing all your attention on these subtle sensations of the breath, notice how your mind comes into the present moment. Any other thoughts just disappear. And you're just aware of these subtle sensations of the breath. And there's a peace arising. Peace arises naturally when you bring your attention into the present moment. Breathing in, breathing out, and more and more relaxed with each breath. And just focus all your attention on the breath. In a couple more minutes. Nice deep, slow, rhythmical breaths, and you just feel getting more and more relaxed with each breath. Something a bit deeper and deeper and deeper into this lovely, peaceful, calm, relaxed state. Every breath. If any thoughts arise, they're obviously distracting or disturbing thoughts about the past, thoughts about the future. Thoughts that are uncomfortable, thoughts about pain. Really any thought, because it's just a distraction from this nice, peaceful, calm state where you don't have to think very much. Whatever the thoughts are, just observe them. Imagine that you're just blowing them away with the breeze of your breath as you exhale. 
just releasing them. As you inhale, you just let the light beyond the clouds just shine through. And there's this beautiful blue sky of your true awareness. It's the eternal light that shines through it. And those thoughts just obscure that. They're like clouds, they just obscure the sky and the sun in the physical world. But actually, that's never really can happen. They don't they just cover them over. They don't really affect their true reality at all. The sky and the sun are in another dimension. They're way beyond the clouds. They cannot be affected by the cloud patterns at all. So just let them go with the breath. Maybe we can just do a few more deep inhales and exhales and just notice that all your attention is in the present moment. You're really not thinking. And there's a lot of peace that's arising. So just experience that. Just enjoy this peace. There's nothing else you need to do, nowhere else you need to go, nothing else to think about. Just be relaxed, be still. So take uh, one more deep inhale, and the lungs up. Same process, just a little bit deeper, fuller. You feel some energy rising up from the lower spine, up into your heart center, into the crown of your head. Pause. Any thoughts, any emotions you're blowing around there, just notice them. One more time, imagine you're breathing light into them. It's beautiful. All the more white light streaming through. And any darkness cannot sustain in that. So you exhale. Just exhale and release all that. All the stomach into the spine so you're completely empty. And when you're ready, you're going to open your eyes. So just open your eyes. And just observe how you feel compared with 11 minutes ago. Hopefully a lot calmer, more relaxed. Try and anchor that state. It means you just stay connected to that state. And the easiest ways of doing that is just breathing. Just, just keep some attention in your breath. Nice, deep, slow, and they call breathing pattern in and out through your nose. And that will help you stay very relaxed, very alert, focused, you're in the present moment. Um, so that was the uh, breathing exercise, which is the first part of the master class. Any um, comments on that for you or any questions? How did you find that? I feel quite light and uh, it's 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 amazing it's an amazing feeling yeah yeah no it does just by using the breath and then a little bit of imagination and bringing in some some light um you do feel different um just breathing has a physiological effect on you so there's a very simple exercise you can do and i'll send you this recording i'm recording it which um will help you to uh, to relax anytime. You know, just in 10 minutes, you can do, you can do it in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Deep breathing, focusing on it. And, and that's really the foundation of all the meditations. You've, you've had a little taste of all of them as I've been sending those short recordings out. But all of them are based on this, this deep breathing, which brings you into the present moment, helps you to relax, it activates. It's called the parasympathetic nervous system, which naturally relaxes you. So it's impossible to have a panic attack if you're breathing nice, deep, slow, rhythmical breaths. You just can't because your body relaxes. Your mind tends to relax as well. So 
that's a great little uh, technique. You know, very simple, but very, very powerful just to help you relax, be present, get your mind focused. Um, so just keep watching your breath as I talk. Um, I'm going to share one secret skill that you need to master to allow your life to work miraculously. Um, you may already guess what that is, but I won't spoil it for you. I'll talk about the four life-changing benefits of doing this. I'll reveal seven stress-busting techniques to help you master the one essential skill. Uh, and then I'll talk about how you can integrate practicing these techniques into your daily life to experience all these life-changing benefits consistently, time for questions, and then can participate in a live meditation discussion. See if we can get through all of this because um, we've got about uh, 40 minutes or so. So yeah. I'm going to uh, just kind of race through it. But uh, I think it's valuable to actually participate. You know, you, if you actually do the live session, and as I said, if you stay for the, for the entire course of this uh, session, including the live meditation and discussion, then uh, I'll give you a powerful 10-step letting go process, a written worksheet for that, uh, as well as a one-hour recording to guide you through it in a meditation and explain it in more detail. So um, stay until the very end. Uh, stick with us. Um, we tend to go on until about 10.30. So if you can uh, if you can make that, but I, I think you'll will give you a, a good experiential taste of what this is about. If you can stay. Excuse me, you know, I didn't get that. You, you stay until about? Uh, generally, the session goes until 10, about 10.30, uh, the discussion okay. and the meditation. Um, oh, okay. So if you can stay for all of it, then you know, I'll give you a little, a little bonus. You have to leave earlier. I understand, but uh, it'll give you an ex experiential taste of what you are, what we actually do. All right. I, I think I'll just be excused at nine, but if possible, can I please rejoin? I think my conversation is not going to take more than 20 minutes. Um, mm. Yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, sure. You've got a, no, you've got a call. That's yeah, no sure. problem. Um, so let me ask, a, just this is a um, hypothetical question. You have to answer it, but just pause and consider. Uh, ask yourself why you're here today. And people only ever turn up to these things if, if they're looking for something. So you may think that you're looking for relief from stress, anxiety, depression, and disease. That's a very common one. Better health. You already expressed that in your case. Uh, more wealth. That's what a lot of people are looking for. Better relationships. Better quality of life and lifestyle. Those are sort of the the common things people are, are looking for. But again, whilst you just pause and consider this, ultimately, what are you really looking for? I'm looking... I'm looking for connecting with my, my great high or my greater high. Mm. My and higher self. My, yes, my higher self. Mm. Um, the one that is not anxious of anything. Well, ultimately, if you want to put it in a word, it's happiness, isn't it? We're all looking for happiness. We want to be happy. Um, and and what, we, what we think is that these things will make us happy. So, so we set up a, a game where we go, well, when I have better health, when I have more wealth, when I have the dream relationship, when I have... A, you know, a lovely lifestyle, but no money worries, then I'll be happy. Um, but that's not how it really works. <laughs> that uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really uh, seem to, to be a formula that works for most people. So then you've got to ask, well, why haven't you found lasting happiness yet? Again, just, you know, you don't have to answer that, but just pause and consider that for a few moments. I'm, I'm just going to be disturbed yeah. a little bit. Um, if you could just uh, hold on for me, please. Just a minute. Okay, no problem.
Thank you so much, uh, Jono. I just want to be present and... Uh, no, no problem. Are you at home? Yes, I am. Mm. Yes, I am. So uh, the reason most people haven't found lasting happiness yet is because they've been looking in the wrong place. Uh, mm. So if you look in the wrong place, you're never going to find it. So we've been conditioned to think that we'll be happy when we are better or more of something, something outside of us. That's society's conditioning and program. And so we bombarded with images like this, fit, healthy, sexy bodies, this is mm. used for many products. And if you don't have one of those, then obviously you feel slightly less than and inferior. Uh, but then of course, there's a company that's ready to sell you something that's gonna help you to look like that. <laughs> That's, that's, mm. uh, that's, that's how our world works. But this doesn't last. So um, at some point we age, the body decays, um, and uh, you know, we, 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 end up, uh, we end up really not in that state, even if we once were. You know, when, when, when you're young, you're in your teens, your 20s, your 30s maybe, but uh, as you get older, um, the body tends to decay. So it's, it's not sustainable even if it lasts for a couple of decades, at some point it's, it's not going to be there. Uh, mm. Cars, fancy cars, nice clothes, you know, things money can buy. Um, a lot of people are looking for some kind of happiness or satisfaction in those. These things also, they don't last. Cars break down. They also cost. They need insurance. Clothes mm. go out of fashion. It's not, a, it's not a permanent source of happiness. And if you've bought a new car, you'll know, oh, well, maybe for a, the first few weeks, maybe a month, so, oh, I'm getting into it. And then after oh, it's around, I'm just getting into my car and I'm driving somewhere because I've got to drive. And actually, you, 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 you stop really even noticing. It. So even if it's a, you know, a, a really uh, luxury car, we get accustomed to it. Mm. Uh, nice lifestyle. So the people are oh, like, no, that dream house. Uh, but uh, often the people who live in these houses aren't particularly happy because the house doesn't make you happy. You can be living in luxury and be miserable. Um, and of course, houses burn down, houses need insurance. None of these things can really do last. Uh, everything in this world uh, ultimately dissipates and decays. Um, might be travel for a lot of people, travel, nice holidays, um, which you know that is, that's been been uh, over the last uh, eighteen months. If you've ha you've got an attachment to traveling, then then that's going to push a few buttons because we haven't really been able to travel very much. Um, those signs have been up in many uh, restaurants and resorts and so on. Maybe it's fine dining. Uh, these experiences are all very temporary, and there's nothing wrong with having them and enjoying them. But you can't. You can't make them a source of happiness because they come and they go. As long as you rely on that, then it's like, well, now I don't have that. Now I need more of that or I need something else. And so we continuously search. Um, and of course, we all know what happens if relationships turn sour, then it can be very, very painful. So that's the flip side of all these nice experiences. They will have a, they will have a, another side. Um, so I saw this. This, this sign um, during Christmas, happiness is 18 days of festive deals. And I just couldn't, I thought I have to take a photo of it. Uh, because if happiness is 18 days of festive deals, <laughs> uh, what happens after the festive season? What happens when the festive deals are no longer there? Christmas is over, the new year comes around, you've got to go back to work well. But these are the kinds of messages that uh, our society uh, uh, tells us. Whether anyone believes that or not, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's subliminal. So this, this uh, doctor called, she's a psychologist called Laurie Santos, who founded a, a podcast called The Happiness Lab, um, says, well, we often think we know what will make us happy. But the sign shows us our minds don't always point us in the right direction. So we long for fame and money or a beach body or a new car, all the stuff I've just showed you. Expect these things will make us happier. And the research shows that it's it's that the, those expectations are just flat out wrong. Not even somewhat wrong, they just flat out wrong. They they're completely wrong. And that's based on on research that's been done on happiness. Mm -hmm. But that really doesn't 
that doesn't these things don't make people sustainably happy uh you may have read some of these books i certainly have read many of them um mm-hmm. and and there's nothing wrong with reading books but at the end of the day a book is not going to bring you happiness a book can give you some new ideas but you have to apply the ideas if you don't actually apply them then the book's useless and so many people they did actually study on these books many people only read the first chapter or two <laughs> they might read 10 20% of the book even if they read the whole I'm book. guilty I'm yeah. guilty I'm guilty of that thing. and yeah. I always buy them wanting to you know uh, yeah wanting to like buy yeah, I mm-hmm. want to change my life and it's all and then you read a bit and you get busy or even if you read the whole book which is unusual like 90% of people don't read the whole book but even if you do okay you read the book so you got some ideas but then what okay so you've actually got to apply those ideas in your daily life on an ongoing basis and that's really the trick and 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 that's where most of these things fall down most personal growth even if you're going to seminars to workshops um uh, yeah see often if you're just reading books you you know you you're not actually living it you're not experiencing it. that's why i put that picture in there um there's a guy called tony robbins you probably heard of him uh who's probably the world's best known motivational speaker i've actually been to one of these in london actually. it was exactly it was like tony yeah, it's tony robbins yeah. oh yes yes um i've been to one of these so i experienced this live i mean it was it was an experience i was like wow this is pretty amazing it's like a rock concert but mm. i i was like is this really sustainable I mean people get on a high they're getting all and he knows exactly how to you know amp people's emotions up get them into a mm-hmm. high state and it's you know all of that but um but then what you know what happens on monday morning the hype's over yeah. you're back at work okay i can't really recapture that that high because it was related to the place and the person and the music and the whole atmosphere and they create that to create a buzz um but is it a lasting source of happiness and some people go back to these these uh, seminars over and over like i remember one of uh, when i went to tony's in london i spoke to one like oh no i've been like 10 times this is like my 10th year because every year I'd go back you kind of like okay <laughs> so yeah you coming yeah. back for well, experience you keep coming yeah. are you actually applying this you know surely if you've done it once i mean it's pretty much the same thing like mm-hmm. go out and apply it and then you don't need to go back because you're applying it and you you know right so often often the, the application is lacking people go they get a they get a good buzz they get a vibe they feel high for a few days and then and then they problem you know, they're back in their problems something happens and so okay now you know actually all of that resmataz and hype uh didn't really help me uh it's pulls so you you know you mentioned you're familiar with those uh clearly those are on a source of happiness all they all they tend to do is they numb the symptoms so whatever it is that you're trying to numb it just kind of covers it over but it's not a sustainable source of happiness and obviously they have side effects uh addiction can develop from pills depending on the medication yes. uh they're not good for your body they're not good for your mind um <clears throat> and you know the consequences of addiction are really suffering <laughs> drugs and drugs and addiction kind of go hand in hand so I'm not a uh, I'm not a fan of drugs. I think there's a place for them in uh in some instances if someone is uh in serious pain, you know, and, and you just need to actually kind of bring them into some kind of state where they can function normally. Maybe if someone is psychotic, maybe you know, there might be instances, but generally, I'd say 95% of cases where they prescribe, they actually there's better ways of dealing with these problems. They don't really they don't really address the underlying cause they just uh address the symptom so they're not really healing anything they're just mm-hmm. making you temporarily feel a bit better but then the side effects as you know so uh psychotherapy that's another way people look for happiness at least they're doing maybe some inner exploration but usually what happens is it just becomes a pattern so it's like every week they go and see their their shrink and they have a chat and they're talking about their past and then the guy says or the lady says come back next week and we'll carry on and some people have been in years years in of psychotherapy and and spent you know many hundreds of thousands of rand on this and and they still no better off 
because you can talk and talk and talk about your problems, but what are you actually doing about that? Are you actually changing anything or are you just talking more about your problems? I think too often that's what happens. There are some good therapists. There's, there's no doubt. There are some good therapists and it can be helpful. So I won't deny that. But um, uh, in, in, in you know, the majority, I think uh, it just becomes another pattern. Okay. So now, and of course, it's a business model. All of these things, there's business models behind. You know, you, 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 you're seeking externally outside of yourself for something. And there's someone who's providing that. And now you've got to pay them, which means you've got to go and work to earn the money to pay them to get this imagined source of happiness. When the truth is, as you said, it's all inside of you. It's not out there. You're not going to find it out there. Uh, money, in fact, has been invented as a form of external searching. So this uh, teaching, which uh, you've got some of the quotes that I've been sending the last couple of days, mm. uh, Course in Miracles. I'll talk more about that as we go on. Uh, but Jesus is essentially the teacher. And he's saying, uh, behind it, he's, he, he wrote the book via someone. And he's saying that all mental illness is some form of external searching. So you're searching outside of yourself for, for some kind of happiness, satisfaction, um, which, which you're never going to find. Um, so let's look then at, at, at what is the cause of unhappiness, because that's always a good place to start. Well, well what causes unhappiness? Um, and this, this lady called Marisa Pierce, she's a hypnotherapist to, um, to celebrities. Uh, so she's dealt with the likes of uh, Princess Diana. She was alive. Amy Winehouse, A-list Hollywood stars, you know, people who have really, they have everything in terms of the world, worldly possessions, money, power, fame. Uh, and yet often they're very unhappy. And so then she gets called in. Well, look, I have everything, but I'm, I'm really unhappy. Um, and so what she observed was that um, it's really about what you believe about yourself. When you know and believe you're enough, you don't need more. You're not looking outside of yourself for happiness. When you feel and believe you're not enough, you always want more. And, and so it's called the hedonic treadmill. You, you're on this treadmill of, well, I, I think I need more. And uh, seeking, seeking, craving, desiring, mm. and, and never actually being happy. Because even when you get what you desire, because that's your pattern, then you immediately say, okay, well, temporarily I might be satisfied for a bit, but pretty much immediately afterwards, I'm already starting to look for the next thing, the next whatever it is. Mm. And this mm. is how addiction develops. Uh, you know, if, if people get, a, get attached to one particular source of pleasure, so it could be a substance, it could be sex, it could be shopping, any of these things, then it's like, I just need more and more and more. And, and it, it, it doesn't really satisfy. Uh, that's the nature of addiction, um, which was observed um, a couple of thousand years ago, two and a half thousand years ago, uh, by a guy called Siddhartha Gautama, who was called the Buddha. And he said, look, desire is the source of all suffering. He observed that. And he said, this is, this is what's going on. Desire is the source of all suffering. And so if you keep desiring... Desire is the source of suffering. Desire, yeah. He called it craving or desire or attachment. There's various words for it. But this desire, this continuous, I need something more, is the source of all suffering. So because what you're saying is I'm not enough as I am. If I'm looking for something else to fulfill me, to make me happy, I'm really saying to myself, I'm not okay as I am. And I always need something outside of me, something else to add to me. And it's perpetual. Because as long as you're on that hedonic treadmill, this, this treadmill of desire and craving, uh, you're never going to be satisfied because there's never enough. You can have everything as some of these celebrities do. And then they, they're like, I'm, it's still not enough. Like, and, then, and then they go, they turn to Marisa Pierre and they say, well, I don't really know where to go from here. Because when they didn't have those material things and the, the money and the status and so on, then they went, okay, well, when I get there, then I'll be happy. That, that's the game they set up. Mm. But then they arrive and they go, but I'm still not happy because <laughs> they haven't really found themselves. They've just mm. they've accumulated a lot of possessions. They've got uh, you know, power and wealth and all of this, but they haven't gone within. They've gone outside of themselves. And mm. so then she just, she just helps them to, to go within and, and, and believe that they're enough. She gives them affirmations. Says, Look, I'm enough. 
I'm enough as I am. I don't need anything more. If I, if I get more, that's fine. Like I'm not averse to having more material mm. stuff, but mm. it's not the source of my happiness. I'm happy mm. anyway, you know, whether I have, I have that or not. So I'm enough as I am. Mm. Even if I lost all of this, I would still be enough as I am. That's, that's really, uh, that's when you, that's you come to true realization of mm. yourself. I'm enough as I am. Even if I lost all my material possessions, my relationships fell apart. I lost everything in the world. I'm still enough. I'm still okay as I am. That's really where you're trying to get to. It doesn't mean you have to actually play that out on the level of form, but it's that detachment really. It's not, not being attached to these things. And the problem with attachment, if you have this desire going on, the, 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 the opposite side of the desire coin is fear. So if I desire something and I think it's going to make me happy and I have an expectation, what happens? Automatically, the more I desire it, my mind goes, but what if I don't have it? Mm. If I have it now, what if I don't have it? What if I lose it? And if I don't have it now, what if my, what if my expectation is not met? What if I'm disappointed? Mm. And so now there's a fear that arises. And so desire and fear are really the opposite sides of the coin, which pull you away from happiness. If you're in desiring or craving, and, and you're fearing, you're not happy. Uh, there's a dissatisfaction. There's a, a discomfort. Uh, there's, there's an unhappiness that's arising. So as uh, Deepak Chopra said, all stress is the perception of some form of external threat. So if you set up this game of, well, I feel like I need something outside of me. I desire it. I have an expectation that I'll get it. Now I can very easily be stressed because... I, I, I can perceive that I won't have what I desire. See? So now I perceive, even if nothing is overtly threatening me, I, I, I perceive a threat in the fact that my, or the, or the expectation, that my, my expectations won't be met. The fear that, I, that these expectations won't be met. And this is, where, this is where fear arises. Fear and stress are really just the same thing. So the, the Buddha called it uh, craving on the one hand or desire, and then aversion on the other. So mm -hmm. between these poles of craving and aversion, our minds are swinging between these, and there's no stillness. There's no underlying happiness because we're continuously uh, thinking and feeling these kinds of thoughts and emotions. So desire sets up stress. Desire creates stress, which is why, as he, you know, the Buddha noticed, he said, desire is the, is the source of all suffering two and a half thousand years ago, and that's still a valid insight. So if you if you, if we understand what what doesn't work, what what causes unhappiness, then you can start asking the question. Okay, well let's ask what is the key to happiness. What a beautiful, beautiful sunset. Yeah. What a picture. What a portrait. So it's just um, what's happening. It seems to have PowerPoint seems to have frozen. Maybe it'll come back. So anyway, I'll just talk to it. Let's move to the strange. Can you still see the screen? Yes. What is the key to happiness? Yeah, I'm just trying to go go further. My screen should say my screen sharing is paused, which there we go. Okay, it was just, it was just being uh, being difficult. Um, so the key to happiness, again, this is a quote from A Course in Miracles, is that... Um, Mental health is inner peace. It enables you to remain unshaken by lack of love from without and capable through your own miracles of correcting the external conditions which proceed from lack of love in others. So it's this idea of inner peace, that you're unshaken by any of the forms in the world. It's lack of love. There's a lot of lack of love in the world. Uh, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. We experience you know, difficulty, conflict in our own lives and our relationships. He's really just saying that when, if you can find inner peace, what, what uh, the Buddha called equanimity, so it's this, the state of inner peace no matter what, then you're actually able to correct these external conditions. And that's when miracles start to happen. Because those external conditions are not separate from your mind. They are, in fact, a projection of your mind. Um, so it's a um, projection of your mind. So... Your life is a projection of your mind. In other words, it's coming from your mind. 
your life reflects what's going on in your mind. So your thoughts and your emotions. So if you're feeling negative, you're feeling uh, you're on this craving, desire, treadmill, and you're not, you're not happy, then you tend to create those kinds of circumstances because your mind, your mind creates your life. But um, if you can start to find this, this inner peace, that you're happy irrespective, you don't need anything in mm -hmm. the world. You're not craving anything. You're not avoiding anything. There's, there's none of those strong emotions. It's just this kind of calm peace, this equanimity, as they call it in the Buddhist teaching. Um, inner peace, whatever you want to call it, then you're unshakable. Whatever happens in the external, mm. okay, it doesn't, doesn't matter that much because I have that peace anyway. Mm. Uh, and, and that's really where these, all these uh, great spiritual teachings are pointing us to, to the kingdom within. Jesus called the kingdom of heaven within us where there's just peace and it's not, it's not dependent on what happens externally uh, to us, uh, what other people do, what we achieve, what we don't achieve, what we have in terms of you know, material possessions. None of that actually really affects it. Mm. So happiness isn't, isn't really a goal in itself. You can't really achieve happiness. That's a delusion. Happiness, oh, I love this quote, happiness is really a butterfly, which when pursued is always just beyond your grasp. But which, if you will sit down quietly, may come and alight on you. And maybe you experienced a little bit of that in the 10 minutes of breathing we did. It was just a sense of alightness, wasn't it? There's something arising. It's like, oh, that feels light. It feels peaceful. What else is happiness? We put a, a label to it. It's a feeling, ultimately. Um, so when you're pursuing something, well, I'll be happy when, you know, in this hedonic treadmill you never actually arrive because your mind is in that craving state and there's no there's no peace but if you just sit down quietly and you go okay if i just sit and i observe my breath and i'm quiet and my mind stills then this phenomenon called happiness may come in a light on you just like a butterfly like, because you're just still and it comes so it's not really something you can seek in fact in the craving in the desire you, you lose it, as, as, as the Buddha noticed. He said, well, if you're craving, then you, you're going to suffer. You're not going to be happy because that craving is the essence of the suffering. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really about knowing yourself. That's a scene from the movie The Matrix. I don't know if you've uh, watched it, but uh, it's a scene where this, the, the main character, Mio, who's the hero of the story, goes to the oracle which, you know, to have, kind of have his future told, get some guidance. And she points to that to the, hmm? He goes to the? To the oracle, she's called. So <clears throat> the oracle is like a prophet. Oh, uh, okay. A shaman in, uh, 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 in, in, in your culture would be a, and in young, I'm not sure, in younger, other than in younger or a, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, but someone, someone that's divine. Oh, okay. They can okay. Kind of I understand. Tell the future, you know, that kind of thing. So, she, he goes to the oracle and she just points him to that sign. She says, do you know what that means? Temet Mosque. And it means um, know thyself in Latin. The so saying to know oneself is the first step toward making flow a part of one's entire life. And just as there is no free lunch in the material economy, nothing comes free in the psychic one. If one is not willing to invest psychic energy, in the internal reality of consciousness and instead squanders it in chasing external rewards, one loses mastery of one's life and ends up becoming a puppet of circumstances. Mm. So really happiness relies on this one character trait. And that's can I take a screenshot of it, uh, of that, uh, Jenna? Hmm? Can I please take a screenshot? Or can, can I take a picture of the last one? I really like it. Yeah, no problem. Please do. Um, I think more than anything, this is what I need to. <laughs> mm. Well, it's about this the idea of flow. So if you can get into flow, which is really about knowing yourself and not chasing these external rewards, um, then 
then that's the, really the state of flow. And in a state of flow, you can perform at a very high level. This isn't about just sitting quietly and meditating for your entire life. Yeah, there's a, there's a place for that. But when you're actually operating in the world, you're, you're in the state of flow. And uh, actually, there's an underlying peace and happiness. And you're not in this, well, I need this. I need this to make me happy, chasing external rewards. And he says, really, what happens then is you become a puppet of circumstances. You become a victim of, of, of life if yes. you do. But it's really about how you choose to use your mind. So really, happiness relies on one character trait. Um, this guy by the name of Charles Glassman. And that's self-discipline. Because you need to be able to discipline your mind to, to operate in certain ways. And so you might say, well, the self-discipline to do what? Well, really, in a nutshell, it's to let go of any negative thought or emotion when it arises. So you can experience, first thing is authentic happiness. So it's happiness or unhappiness. That's always experienced in your own mind. Happiness is an inner, inner state. It's not out there. Something might trigger it. But really, it's only your own negative thoughts and feelings about whatever it is or whoever it is that can make you unhappy, if you're honest about it. It's not the thing itself. It's your perception of it. So your own negative thoughts and feelings can make you unhappy. Mm. If two premises are true, which they are, you could dispute them, but they, they're actually self-evident truths. Happiness is experienced in your own mind. It's not experienced anywhere else. <laughs> And uh, only your own negative thoughts and feelings really can make you unhappy. It's not anyone else. It's, it's how you're responding to things, your mm. perception of things. So then, because those two things are true, then learning how to let go of your negative thoughts and emotions must be the key to your happiness. It follows logically from those first two premises. So that's the first key benefit is to find authentic happiness. Um, you learn this one essential skill of letting go which is why i've called this program the art of letting go secondly gives you fulfilling flow so if you're able to let go of negative thoughts and emotions quickly then you can remain calm poised and able to enjoy each moment and you can take positive effective action to respond to any situation appropriately mm. if you if you're calm you're poised you can actually even even in a situation that's like a crisis some people might say it's a crisis. You could actually enjoy it because you're calm, you're poised, and you're in your flow. And you're able to take very positive, effective action to respond to any situation appropriately. And that's where you want to be. And that's a very high-performing state, mm -hmm. uh, which leads to good results generally. So that's key benefit number two. Um, it's really when we act, flow is really about when we act freely, for the sake of the action itself, rather than for ulterior motives. We learn to become more than what we were. So it's not about, I want something out of this. That's, that's the, the ego's way of doing it. I want something, I need something. I'm going to do this because I want to achieve my goal. It's more about, I'm, I'm just freely acting. So you know, there's a picture of a father, I assume, with his daughter. Mm. And they're just having fun. There's no goal there. It's just, they're just freely acting in the moment and they're having fun and uh and then we learn to become more than what we were so actually in that in that happiness in that happy state we we become as abraham maslow called self-actualized we actually realize that this happy state is our true nature this is who we really are and we experience that directly it's not in the future it's it's right now uh but it it it, it, it um, means that we have to let go of these ulterior motives. So even in you know in business, you know apparently you have goals and you have things to do, but actually each interaction, like each engagement, let's say we had that meeting the other night, you know that was a, that was satisfying in itself. I enjoyed the interaction, irrespective of what comes from it. You know the experience okay. itself is fulfilling. It's mm. a happy experience. You see, so it's not okay. Well, I'm just meeting because I want to get this and this and this outcome from the meeting. It's a meeting because actually it's just nice to, mm -hmm. it's nice to go and meet and connect and have a chat. And it's, it's a, it's a nice way to spend an hour and a half. You see, so that's the idea of flow. 
and then stuff unfolds, but it's not like you're attached to the stuff. The meeting itself was rewarding in itself. And, and you can approach your entire life that way. So this really is the key to higher purpose and to ecstatic well-being. So there's this authentic happiness, which leads to uh, a flow in every aspect of your life because that's the, the, the requirement to enter flow. And then you have a healthy, meaningful, extraordinary, ordinary life. Um, it's filled with these miraculous experiences and results. So the one leads to the other. And it all starts, it all starts with, uh, with the, the idea of letting go. Because if you can let go of your unhappiness, then you can find happiness, no matter what. Authentic happiness is no matter what's happening, I can find happiness. And then I can flow in my life. And then I can flow naturally leads to health. Uh, it leads to a sense of meaningful, and I call it extraordinary ordinary. So you're not necessarily doing anything extraordinary, you know, winning Wimbledon or climbing Mount Everest, mm. these kinds of things. You're not necessarily doing that. Most people don't do these things. Uh, that's, you know, a very small group of people participate in these very extraordinary experiences. Uh, but you know, in your ordinary life, you, you know, you've got meetings, you've got work, you've got family, you've got social engagement, whatever. It's extraordinary ordinary because you're actually very happy and you're in a state of flow. And those really? experiences are then just miraculous. It's not anything phenomenal. It's just you feeling happy. You're feeling quite connected to people. Uh, there's, there's some joy arising. Uh, you're enjoying your life. You're enjoying it moment by moment. And so that's what I mean by an extraordinary, ordinary life. Because actually it is pretty extraordinary if you can enjoy your life moment by moment. There's not many people who live in that, in that state of mind. Not anything, uh, not, not having to do anything extraordinary. Maybe in time you do do, you know, extraordinary things. Who knows? But the people go, wow, that's amazing. But then <laughs> it, it, it's not about the, the external. It's not about, you know, the achievement. Of the, it's, it's about, well, am I enjoying it? Am I still in flow? You know, whatever yeah. it is. Because that's the only place you're going to find happiness is in the now. So there's four keys to an extraordinary ordinary life. First one is the, is the key to authentic happiness, which is how to let go of any negative thoughts or emotions, no matter how challenging the situation provoking them seems to be, which then leads to the second benefit, uh, the key to fulfilling flow, which is how to remain poised and enjoy the moment while taking positive effective action to respond to any situation appropriately. And then benefits three and four the key to higher purpose and ecstatic well-being so how to be happy and flow in every aspect of their life so it's not just one aspect some people can do it quite well let's say in work but then their family life is is not good their social life is not good it's not in every aspect of your life you carry it with you wherever you go and you live a healthy meaningful extraordinary ordinary life filled with miraculous experiences and results and if you can do that then you're pretty much doing the best you can as a human being if you can live a life like that. Mm -hmm. there's, not, there's not many people who are, yes. but it is possible. It is possible if you apply these principles. Uh, there's no doubt. And I, you know, I, I do experience, largely I do experience that myself. I experience, well, you know, actually most of the time I'm pretty happy and uh, life is flowing and I'm busy. You know, and I've got lots of things going on, as you know, but... Mm. I just flow with it. It's like, okay, just get up, do your thing, flow with each experience, be present. Mm. But can you see why letting go really is the critical skill? Mm. Because it all starts from that. If you can let go of negative thoughts and emotions as they arise, then you can find authentic happiness. Then you can find fulfilling flow. And from fulfilling flow comes fulfillment, higher purpose, and uh, this ecstatic well-being. You really can experience wow i actually really feel well i just feel happy i feel well you know it's uh it's possible and there's uh one of our members joining so letting go leads to authentic happiness flow leads to performing higher purpose and ecstatic well-being but if you can't let go and you hold on to your negativity then all of those things just just remain Mm. And, and 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 so it all gets cancelled out hi hi you kim can you hear us yeah 
Sorry, I actually forgot it was the master class. It's fine. We're going to do a session. Don't worry. I'm just uh, taking videos. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry for your hi. Nice to meet you. Sorry. I, I, I think maybe let me go because... <laughs> I wasn't going to join for that long anyway, and I actually forgot. I thought, we, okay. Greetings, uh, Kim. Greetings, um, nice to meet you. You don't have to leave on my... Uh, no, 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 uh, not at all. No, I just... Okay. I, I actually forgot. It. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do a session, so you can stay, Kim, if you want. I know, but, but John, no. I wasn't no. going to stay that long anyway, so... Cause no. I've, I've, yeah, so... I'll do well, tell you what, we, Rio's got to, got to go at nine for about half an hour, so why don't you come back in at nine? And we'll do some uh, meditation or something. Okay, all right. Thank you. Hi, bye, Buyo. Enjoy. Bye, Kim. Thanks. All okay. the best. Bye-bye. So... Um, and you see the logical sequence mm. starts yeah. with letting go. That, mm. that leads to happiness flow and everything comes from it. If you hold on to your negativity, you're not happy. If you're not happy, you can't, uh, you can't experience flow. And if you're not happy and you're not in flow, then forget about being truly fulfilled, having a sense of higher purpose and ecstatic well-being. It just doesn't happen <laughs> because... You're unhappy. All of those are, are really a, 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 an extension of happiness. Correct. We have good words for really. It's it's one it's one state of mind. Whatever you want to call it, happiness, well-being, flow. So the question is, you know, how can you learn to let go and find your flow? So learning new information is often necessary. It's not a sufficient step. And you'll know that from your experience with books. Okay, I can learn some new information. I can read the books. And does anything really change? Mm. <laughs> Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. so, um, there's, there's, there's two ways to actually truly transform. And the first is through intense pain and suffering. You're forced to go within and break through suddenly to a new level of understanding and wisdom, which is the way of the cross. And... Uh, the second is through conscious discipline practice of spiritual ideas and techniques. You systematically grow in understanding and wisdom. The first way is a hard way. That's what most people follow. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the second way because it's actually consciously being able to do it. Let me just say hello to John. John, how are you? No, hi, John. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So um, if you don't mind, let's... Uh, I'm just going to finish uh, finish this for about. Yeah, yeah, time. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine, fine. I think it might be quite a useful recap for you, and then vio has got to go at nine, and we'll uh, we'll go into some practice. Um, but you know, I'm talking about I'm talking about all the stuff we're talking about, so it might be quite interesting to just get a little high high level overview. Yeah. So um, Vio, as I said, that you know, there's two ways: um, the way of mastery, which is really about consciously in a disciplined way, practicing these spiritual ideas and techniques um, so that you, you, you systematically are growing and understanding wisdom day by day. Most people are not on that path. Most people just kind of wait for life to life to make them suffer. They wait for a, a baseball bat to hit them over the head. And then they're like, oh, I'm in such pain and suffering. And only then do I, do I, do I start asking for, uh, for answers. So, for me, the way of mastery is the only way to go because you can actually proactively, in a very disciplined, constructive way, start to do this. Um, so the principles of this are understanding and realization through your personal experience. It requires your active willingness and your disciplined effort. Uh, doing key spiritual practices regularly is essential. And it can be greatly facilitated by another person or group who help to raise the, I'm using alchemical language here, initiates consciousness by transmitting positive energy to the person or holding him or her accountable. And, and that's what happens quite a lot uh, in these Zoom sessions. So even though we're not physically together, the energy transmission still happens um, because there's an interaction, there's communication going on. So we can be, oh, well, John's joining us from, from the UK, so thousands of miles apart, mm. doesn't matter. You know, the energy is being transmitted. And so the immersion in these key spiritual practices and this positive field of consciousness really greatly accelerated. So by, by, by 
engaging in a process where there's group energy and there's a facilitator that accelerates your, your spiritual growth in a way that on your own, typically you can't do. I'm not saying it's not possible, but uh, usually, you know, people are in some kind of process uh, in all the great spiritual traditions. So, you know, there's usually a teacher, the guru, the teacher, the master, whatever. And he's teaching and he's, he's transmitting this energy and he's teaching some of these ideas, these principles, as well as some of the techniques to his disciples, his students, who then learn and they absorb from him and, and also in the group, they, they absorb it. So now the beauty of this technology that we have is that you can do this without actually having to physically be together which is kind of the first time in human history that, that that's possible. Um, so we can just log in from where we are and we can duplicate, you know, what's happened for millennia um, online, which is pretty amazing. So um, the technology enables it. Um, so there's these, these seven key spiritual practices to help you to let go of negativity. And I'll, I'll just mention them. So these are, these are the, the, the seven ways that I promised to, to reveal. So there's breathwork techniques, number one. And this is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with yoga, but actually if you go into, into the science of yoga, there are eight limbs, there are eight aspects to yoga. Um, so I'm just referencing it to those. In, in yoga, there's asana, which is your posture. So actually the first posture is just to sit and be comfortable in meditation. So in any breathwork, you set yourself up in a posture and uh, that's the start of it. And then pranayama, that means uh, breath control. So you're yeah. learning to control your breath consciously, just like we did in the first 10 minutes. You know, that was some pranayama going on there. Prachahara means a withdrawal of the senses. So you, when you do that kind of breath work, you close the eyes, you actually withdraw the senses and you go within and you start to connect with the deeper part of your mind and you're not so aware of your body senses. So, and you experienced all of those things, you know, just in a, in a simple breathwork technique, those three limbs of yoga are, are operational. And then there's uh, what I call multidimensional meditation. So it's meditation where you're using the breath, but you also might be using some visualization as we did. You know, you breathe in, you visualize light. Um, you can use the voice, you can use toning, you can use touching. All of these things really help you to engage in the present moment. And, and, and uh, withdraw the senses from the external world and go within. Um, right. And those aspects of meditation are called dharana and dhyana. So the dharana is, the, um, is where you've, you have focused concentration. So let's say you just focus on your breath and you're just watching your breath and you just observe that and you do that for however long. That's focused concentration. But that tends to lead to dhyana, which is a deeper contemplative meditation which um, we'll go into if you stay um, for the whole session. We, we do typically maybe a half an hour to 40 minute meditation where you go deeply in and, and you really experience a deeper state of awareness where you focus. So that's the start, but there's almost like you're just opening up. There's a surrender aspect that comes into Diana that you're opening up and you're saying, I'm just experiencing whatever it is. And, you can call that many things, peace, love, joy. It's a, it's a feeling that's coming through. So uh, meditate, the dharana leads you into the dhyana. Then you've got forgiveness or what I call letting go. Mm -hmm. And of course, in miracles, um, Jesus uses the term forgiveness. I prefer letting go because I think it's more descriptive of what you actually need to do, which is to let go of negative thoughts and emotions. That's what you need. That's what mm -hmm. forgiveness entails. You don't really forgive someone else. What you do is you let go of your negative thoughts and emotions towards them. Mm. That's really that's what forgiveness really means. Wow. So then it becomes much more practical because a lot of people say, "Well, I need to forgive this person." What does that even mean? <coughs> uh, there's a lot of confusion about what forgiveness means. Whereas if you say, "Well, I need to let go of my negative thoughts and emotions towards that person," now it becomes much more practical and much more mm. doable. See, so that's why I use the letting go term because it, it's actually, it's action oriented. I need to let go. I think we all have a sense of, yeah, I know when I've let go and I know when I'm holding on, right? I'm holding on. I've got all these thoughts and emotions still going on and I'm interbulated. I'm not happy. I'm, there's, there's a discomfort. There's a conflict going on in me. And when I let go, 
and I just release all of that, I'm not thinking those thoughts anymore, I'm not feeling those emotions, then I feel a sense of release. And then okay. peace arises. So you had a little experience of that in the 10 minutes uh, breathwork session we did. Because you went, it just feels light and it feels amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's just the consequence of letting go. If you let go, you feel peace. Uh, the one leads to the other. And, and those are really related to some of the yogic uh, yama, niyama, and prachahara. Um, those are um, um, three of the eight limbs. So yama and niyama are really, it's observances and abstention. So if you're going, I'm not going to do that, that's a, uh, that's a, a yama. And if you say, no, I'm, I'm going to do that, that's a niyama. Or maybe I've got it the wrong, but you get the idea. So it's like saying, for instance, I'm going to I'm going to abstain from drinking too much alcohol. I'm going to abstain from smoking, from taking drugs. I'm going to abstain from lying, cheating, swearing. You know, all of these are abstentions. And then I'm going to practice being present, being connected, being loving, being kind. That's a that's a positive affirmation of what you want to do. And those are the really the foundations. Because if you're not if you don't have some of those foundations in place, um, and let's say you know you're addicted to alcohol, you're an alcoholic. How, how, <laughs> that's not a good foundation <laughs> on which to base your uh, your life uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and any kind of happiness, because you, you have a you have a major problem, you have a major addiction there, uh, which you can't let go of, and that means that your your mind is intubulated. Uh, you've got a craving going on all the time. You know, I, I need this the substance in order to just feel normal now that's that, that, that's where addictions take you just to feel okay never mind happy just to feel somewhat okay i need this the mm. substance so you you, you you got to start with the foundation which is why the yamas and the niyamas are in place like okay if i if i've got a, a good foundation then i can start to build then i can start to, to to go into these higher states of meditation connection but if i haven't got a good foundation it's just it's not going to happen um, and it also relates to prachahara, which is uh, the withdrawal of the senses. So you can withdraw and you can go, actually, I, I'm able to let go of the craving for that, whatever it is, right? That there's a sense of withdrawal. I'm not so attached to my body senses. Because if you think about all addictions, it's really just feeding a sensation, isn't it? It's like yeah. I drink and I get a sensation. I have sex, I get a sensation. I, and, and, you know, so it's the sensation that then we get addicted to. So the prachahara, withdrawal of the senses from uh, attachment to sensation is, is a big part of it, a big part of the letting go. And we also do these group discussion sessions, which you'll experience tonight. So uh, it's about uh, niyama. It's about a, a practice of study in, in the yoga teaching. They call it svajaya, part of the niyama uh, limb of yoga, which is really about study. So it's about like reading a text, studying it, contemplating it, you know, focusing your attention on it. And we do that in the group discussion sessions, you know, in a, in a group way. So it's not just up to you. And you also get some guidance and facilitation from me because this text that we study, I'll show, you, show it to you. Um, as you can see, it's kind of uh, biblical in nature, right? This is not a, <laughs> it's not a small book. There's a lot of, a lot of words in there and a lot of deep, profound concepts. So the idea of the group discussion sessions is just to help you to really do that. And then um, reading, listening, uh, reading and listening to spiritual texts. Uh, so that's the we study of Course in Miracles, mostly fasting and abstinence. So that means abstaining from these things that aren't good for you. So habits that, you know, don't necessarily serve you. Uh, and also um, maybe from food as well. So you go, okay, well, I'll go for 12 hours in the day. 12 hours in every 24 i'm not eating or 16 and 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 actually that sharpens your mind it does some amazing things for your for your mental clarity is um, it yeah yeah it does um helps you to just let go and you, you sort of go into especially if you do it for long periods i mean 60 12 or 16 hours like it's, it's not that big a deal i do it all the time but if you do it for a few days then you can really get into a, a, an altered state of mind which is why fasting is is a spiritual practice. You know, the, in the Catholic tradition, they have the Lent and you, you're going to fast. And they do it in, um, in the Muslim tradition, you know, the Ramadan, they fast mm -hmm. for the whole day. Um, it's, 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 because it's abstaining, saying, okay, I'm just going to let go of my 
my need, my constant need for this thing called food. Um, and actually you can, because largely it's, we don't need as much food as we think we do. Uh, it's, a, it's a mental addiction. And then at the end of the day, there's a reflection process where you just calm your mind, go into a little meditation, withdraw the senses, you do some breathing in a nice posture. So that's the asana, the pranayama, prachahara, withdraw your senses by closing your eyes and just focus your mind on some, some uh, the breath and then on some questions that you ask and you answer. Okay, so how do you reflect and re you review on your day. So that's uh, a program I've put together. And if you're doing all of those things, then uh, you've integrated the spiritual spirituality into your life. Because spirituality is really about practices. You know, people say, I'm so spiritual. Okay, well, what are you doing? It's, it's anything different from anyone else. And, and mm -hmm. so it involves like practice because the practice changes your state of mind, you see. Doing all of these things changes your state of consciousness. So now you're in a different state of mind. Uh, and, and that's really the key. And then all of those, so that's seven limbs of yoga. There's an eighth one, which is called samadhi, which is where you bring it all together and you actually experience this, this very light, free, happy way of being where that's your natural state. And there's a sameness. Samadhi actually, the root of it is, is, is a sameness in Sanskrit. It means that there's a sameness of perception. So for instance, a master like Jesus saw everyone the same. He just saw, look, everyone's a child of God. That's what he saw and nothing else. He didn't, didn't, didn't let any of the, the other stuff, all the chaos and the confusion and darkness and pain and suffering, he didn't let it cloud his perception of that. But that took a lot of mind training. He didn't just achieve that. It took him 30 years to get there. And, and then he stayed in there. And, and then people felt that, that state. And so they, they liked being in his company and his presence. And listening to him because it was like that energy got transmitted. Um, so that's where we're heading. He's saying, you know, you can be as I was, you can be in this happy, calm, peaceful state and radiate this energy and people can, can, uh, can be inspired by that. People, uh, people will, 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 will be helped by that if you're in that yeah. state. Mm. <clears throat> so I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the program. Uh, so I know you said you have to go in about five minutes. So um, this, this program I put together is a facilitated one-year mind and life transformation process it's based on the way of mastery, yoga, and immersion learning, which is this idea that you, if you immerse yourself in something, then you learn it much quicker. So if you do a, an hour a week, you're not going to learn it as fast as if you do a couple of hours a day. So it's just, how, you know, it's just a, a time factor. So if you, if you can immerse yourself in this, uh, through this program for a year, then the, the amount of learning and transformation uh, is extraordinary. And maybe I'll ask John, John just to share some of his experience because he's just been through a six-week course and now we, I think we're about six weeks into the, uh, the follow-up. So we've been doing wow. this about three months. Well, is it June? June, so from the beginning of June. So July, August, September, yeah. So it's about three months, I think, mm. John. Um, so it incorporates these seven key spiritual practices that I just showed you. It's all integrated into the program and the seven limbs of yoga by design. Uh, it includes live and recorded daily online meditations and discussion sessions via Zoom. Uh, so you'll get to experience one when you come back. Transformational exercises, uh, solo meditation and breath work, and uh, also studying A Course in Miracles. Um, it's all integrated into the program. So if you follow the program, you're doing all of this stuff. You don't have to design it. I've designed it. Um, and it's based on these, uh, these you know, very ancient principles. Yoga is thousands and thousands of years old. It's yeah. a very ancient teaching, uh, which, which most people don't really understand. Even if they go to yoga, I think yoga is going to a yoga class and doing some <laughs> pictures and postures. And actually, that's, <laughs> that, that, that is almost a westernized version of it. The, the real yoga is this, uh, this deep spiritual uh, path mm. really it means union with god you know yoga means union it means union with your higher self that's what it means and that's what it's designed mm. to do it's not a physical workout although that can be part of it there's nothing wrong with doing you know the, the, the physical side of it as part of it and then but then typically what the the mystics the yogis did is they do they did they do the yoga the physical yoga and then they go into meditation because it would just quiet their minds 
and all that restlessness would be gone and then they'd sit and they'd go into meditation. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't really about the, the physical exercise, just a means to get into the state of mind, you see. Um, which is a, a, in the West, we go, oh no, the, the, the point is to go and have a workout. <laughs> And I, I always meditate afterwards for like as long as I can, for like 10 minutes. And then they kick me out. They're going like, I'm going, but this is the whole point. It's about the meditation, right? Don't stop it after 10 minutes. You've just got into this really nice kind of peaceful state. So enjoy it. Uh, so it's, um, sorry, I've just gone back instead of forward. So the, um, the goal is to help you to learn to let go of fearful, stressful thoughts and emotions whenever they arrive. So you can start consistently experiencing um, peace, love, and joy. But I just want to talk quickly about A Course in Miracles before you go, because just so you get an overview of what it is. Um, yeah. So there's a text of about uh, 670 pages, explains in details the principle and the philosophies on which the course is based, uh, about a 488-page workbook, which is made up of 365 daily lessons, that are designed to systematically train your mind how to let go of its negativity mm -hmm. and allow you to live in a what I call a miraculous state of mind, which another word for that is flow. So you've experienced a couple of those because I've been sending those uh, breath breaks. So the breath yes. breaks are helping you practice a lesson in the course. And there's 365 of them. Uh, some of them are review lessons. Uh, at the moment we're on review lessons. So he's reviewing what we covered uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, but it's a lesson in itself, uh, and it's, it's different from the original lesson. Uh, and then there's a manual for teachers, which is uh, for additional guidance and clarification of terms in a Q&A format. Um, so it's a lengthy work. You're looking at uh, about 1,200 pages, and then there's some supplements as well that got written later. Uh, it's something that you really need to study. It's not something you'd speed read. Mm. <clears throat> So um, it was, how did it come about, you might ask? Well, it was transmitted by Jesus. He identified himself as such to this lady called Helen Schuckman, who was a professor of psychology in New York, so one of the biggest, busiest cities in the world, uh, between 1965 and 1972. And uh, she and her, her colleague, her boss, one day in 1965, were going to, uh, to a disciplinary hearing. There were, there were many of them. There was a lot of fighting a lot of conflict in their department and he turned to her and he just said like there must be a better way than this i'm tired of this I'm tired of all the conflict and the backstabbing and uh, and she agreed with him she said yes i agree and i'll you know i'll help you find it so there was a meeting of minds there was a meeting of minds and a common purpose to find a better way really of living um and very soon afterwards uh, helen started having some quite vivid dreams she saw herself in white robes as some kind of priestess she saw Jesus and she, she told Bill about them, who was a, a, a colleague. And he's like, okay, well, you know, they were psychologists, so they understood these kinds of things can happen. And then a few months later, um, this voice started to speak to her. It just said, this is a course in miracles. Please take notes. And she was like, okay, <laughs> what's going on here? So she phoned Bill and said, like, like, am I going crazy? He said, well, I don't know, just maybe see what happens write write down what this voice says and bring in your notes to work in the morning and we'll you know we'll have a look and that's what happened so then that's how this transcription process started and she would write down what jesus would say verbatim she'd take it in to work he would she would read the notes to him he would type them up and that's how uh, it got it got produced into a book eventually it got published in 1976 and she well, what is it really? Well, it's a systematic mind training course to teach you a radically different way of thinking about and perceiving everything from a non-dual perspective. So that means you're not seeing things separated. You're not, you're not seeing duality, like the up and the down and the light and the dark and the good and the evil. But this is what characterizes our world. You're right. actually seeing that there's only oneness. There's only actually one thing going on, even though there appear to be two. It appears to be two, which is kind of radical, but uh, that's what non-dual means. And that's what this whole process, it's a mind training course to teach you how to actually do that because we don't know how to do that. We know how to perceive duality very well. You know, we, we, we're born into a world where, like we taught, well, there's always opposites. You know, there's yeah. up and down, there's hot and cold, there's male and female, light and dark, good and evil. 
um, this is what we grow up with. So we're very good at perceiving that one, but we, we're not good at perceiving that actually there's only light. There's only really one. Sorry truth. to disturb you, John. Yes, May I on. please um, make that phone call? I'll, I'll definitely be coming back. Yeah. Okay. Well, rejoin us in the, what, 20 minutes or half an hour? 20 minutes to half an hour, yes. Right. I would. Okay. Just, just jump back in and you can, uh, you can join our session. But I've given you a little overview, I think. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And, uh, and uh, I love John and uh, Mrs. John. Okay. All, <laughs> All right. right. See, See you guys. Shortly. Cheers, man. No problem. Okay. Uh, John, thank you for your patience on that. Um, no, it's fine. It's fine. I hope uh, it was interesting. So, um, yeah. Uh, anything to... Um, Anything to check in on? Well, I think it's good that you seem to have one or two, you know, two or three new people kind of having a look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it sort of happens organically. Um, so uh, I'm not, I, I've tried the Google Ads route and stuff, didn't really work. So I'm, uh, I'm just, yeah, I, I actually met Vio in a business context. Um, we're going to be working together on stuff. And I sent him the, the stuff, you know, the stuff I send out, the WhatsApp messages. And he was like, oh, this is amazing. It's really, this really works for me. So uh, I think that's how, it, that's how it works. It's just, it's organic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, by all means, I invite people. I might actually start a half an hour earlier. Because I started this one at half past uh, six your time. But um, still, I ran out of time. So I'm gonna, next time I'm going to start... Uh, so half an hour earlier, I think. So ideally, we can we can get to the point at the end of the session, and then then they can carry on and join the discussion if they'd like to. Anyway, so um, yeah, anything to share? Anything to check in on? Uh, no, I think I'm. I'm I think I'm. Yeah, sorry we didn't make it at lunchtime, actually. I, I know you tried to call, actually, John. Um, we were just in uh, transit. I just wondered if you were going to join, because I, I was going yeah. to speak to my wife. And, um, yeah, I, 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 did, I did intend to, but we had a bit of a change of plan. And, uh, hmm. Did you go bit. down to your cottage and see? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay, no problem. Sue, anything to share or check in on? Uh, I'm just feeling really tired today, really tired and lethargic and, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Any, any idea why? Maybe because you've been to the hospital? Or? Um, it might have been that, or it might be because I've told a few people how good I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I always find, I always find that yeah. it changes. As soon as I say that to people, it changes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, it's just the ego. Yeah. It doesn't want you to feel good. And <laughs> okay, we'll make you feel low energy, lethargic. Yeah. But I think you just got to kind of just observe it from that that place of detachment and go. Okay, it's just it's passing, yeah. it's rising, it's passing away. Tomorrow I'll feel better. It's just. I find I'm much better at observing now observing the ego and noticing it mm. yeah well that's uh, that's what it's all about really that's the start because mm. once you can observe then automatically there's kind of a letting go that's happening isn't it yeah it's because you observe <laughs> so what's the observer then who's the observer it's something else now that's the holy spirit arising in your mind and then the next step is okay well if i can just observe this and i'm not actually that attached to it yeah. Automatically letting it go. I'm not I'm not making it so real and so important that it's gonna stress me and really negatively affect me so much. And then just you can help it on its way with a bit of breathing and go, okay, well I'll practice a course lesson and just try and just drop the thought and the emotion and the energy of it. Um, so that's sort of the second phase of okay, I'm actually gonna actively let this go. Uh, where, where a lot of teachings don't say that. So they're just observation or awareness is enough. 
it's a, it's for sure it's a, it's half the deal but you actually need to then choose to let go as well which is where the forgiveness or the letting go comes so yeah just okay just a body just the fluctuations of the body experience the body mind experience you know the, it's, a, it's a roller coaster you go up and you go down what you're really trying to do is smooth out the roller coaster hmm instead of you know dramatic downs and then you know occasional uh, amazing highs and then it's like okay well i'm on a high and then and then you go oh dear here we go again yeah. like crashing down. <laughs> uh you know because because that's what a lot of people that's what a lot of people's lives are like um so it's just yeah, okay it's a smooth gentle kind of you know there's going to be some fluctuations which is inevitable in the human condition but it, it's not so dramatic it's actually there's an underlying stillness you know imagine like an ocean and just like ripples you know these gentle waves and it's like the mediterranean it's very calm and and then you go a little bit beneath the surface and it's just calm it's just peace there mm. it's not these like gigantic you know uh, waves like crashing down you're going to get dumped and uh, you know, on the other side of uh, other side of that coin, the surfers love those waves because they're like, "Wow, you know, I can I can have this ecstatic experience and I can ride the wave and it's amazing." But you know, if you get dumped, it's all it's all very you know up and down. Um, and I think this is just about a kind of more gentle way of finding that equanimity, no matter what. And you're not on the roller coaster ride anymore, and it's all, yeah, you know, it's all it's all kind of quite. Happy, really. It's talking about happiness. Happy, smooth, peaceful, whatever you want to call it. So if you're observing these things as they happen and they're not really bothering you, then yeah, it's all good. Yeah. And we had a we had a friend visit us this afternoon, and um, I haven't seen her for I don't know, maybe a month, mm. month or six weeks. And she said, she said, it's a different energy about you, about about both of us. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So, Serene. Uh, people do start to notice, and they're not quite sure why. Yeah. But I, you know, I guess there, there's the there's the opportunities to share some things. Yeah. Actually, we've been doing we've been doing this over the last two um, three, months, three months. Actually, it's been. Hi Sue. Yeah. Hi John. Hi. Hi yeah. Welcome, back. Welcome back. She joined about half an hour ago. <laughs> I said, oh, come back. Oh, oh. So, um, yeah, anything to check in on, Kim? Um, Sue and John have just done their check in expression. Anything it's arising? Bit of a rough day. Okay. <laughs> yeah, is that situation we discussed yesterday any better? Uh, um, not entirely sure if it's better. It's quite this intense, and mm. but I was just trying to do a lot of forgiveness, and I don't know if it's actually helped. And then I also felt like I needed to share something, although I didn't get to do that yet because I also had quite a busy day with with work and meetings, and just mm. just lots of people mm. contacting, you know, just lots of messaging and all that, and then. So I had to just kind of be that. But yeah, like my friend wasn't, I don't think she, she didn't get the outcome she wanted. But at the same time, I think the sort of anger is more dissipated into sadness. But, mm. but I think that was better than what, what could have transpired. And it's quite difficult to like not... To, to be detached, should I say? I don't want to say I was sucked in, but you also feel like, I want to say, just like, I actually wanted to send a message and say something, you know, but mm. then I also wouldn't have known the latest and you, you don't know if it's going to do more, I wouldn't say harm, but maybe not have the best effect. Mm. Mm. So it's just, yeah, it's like that, you know, you, you, can, you can do the spiritual forgiveness and that, but you also feel like, what happens if, like, I could maybe stop someone from stepping in the fire <laughs> or just like, okay, the past is the past, but you can somehow decide how you're going to 
go forward with the actions going forward and mm. well, it's who's who's, it. you know, who's who's in charge who's deciding here no but i well in terms of me is it the ego or is it I no, think it was because I feel, felt very really like just stressed and emotional. I didn't feel I didn't feel at peace about it, but I felt like mm. more that was the out of love. It feels like a love, but yeah, that was it's difficult to discern because I mean it that did that did that was part of my process around it. But you know, it's it's like when you see a loved one. <laughs> You know, you can't help but get a, like some kind of emotional and, and because I, it's out of care and concern is maybe that's from ego, but it still feels like love, but it's not that like nice, peaceful love, but it's like hell, like what the hell is going to happen? <laughs> mm-hmm. And what, you know, again, it's like, what could I at least do or say or message or whatever that could maybe help change events? But then again, is it for me to ch- help interfere like that? So, I mean, the other help, of course, I was doing the morning is just doing like the lesson, you know, kept on repeating the lessons and it's all about forgiveness. And that was what I want to say, just let it go. That's what I was, my message was going to say, let it go, just let it go. Mm. And the people in your life who have passed, what, you know, what would they say? Would they want you to do that? You know what I mean? I was trying to think of mm. ways to, I encourage the cross and say, let it go. And I wanted to read a passage of that. That's what I want, you know, anyway. Mm. But it felt like, like this tense, not mm. horrible tense, emotional, like. Mm. Uh, charge there. What's that? It was a charge, emotional charge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel tired. It's like, mm. you know. No, oh, emotions drain you because there's an energy. Yeah. It's, a, it's a tense energy, that, and you hold that, and it, uh, it does does tend to tie you. Yeah. So, oh yeah, all I can uh, just reiterate what I said is just you know, the more you let go, the more you do your own forgiveness or letting go, uh, the more that situation you're helping that situation to resolve. And what that looks like on the level of form, well, you'll be guided moment by moment you know there's, there's no way of knowing exactly what you should do but if you feel like you're in that state and that something's coming through and you feel that that's right and it feels peaceful then you know then listen because the, the holy spirit can give you guidance as to you know practical actions you can take but uh, be, be aware of you know if you're feeling turbulated you're feeling stressed then that's generally not a good state to act from I know, I know, and then maybe it was good then I ultimately didn't, but it's like, I don't know, I mean, I was really struggling with, I did meditation, this lesson, and it's like trying to get that, it was a very, it's very intense, very, to try Mm -hmm. and let that all go. And you think I'm there, and then it comes back, and you think I'm there, and then it comes back, it's just like, no, well, welcome to the welcome to the hero's journey. <laughs> yeah, the game because it's not easy. The ego is deep seated, and it keeps you know just just when you think it's gone, then whoop, up it pops again. Got to deal with it again. But every time you do that, you got to understand every time stuff come stuff comes up for you, and you actually go, okay, I'm willing to let this go and forgive, and do my best to let it go. Every time you're doing that, that's healing. You're healing your mind. You're saying, I have an intent to let this go and to find the spirit. And that's powerful. You, you think nothing's happening, but it is. Because you, you are changing your mind in the process of that, you see. In the past, you might have just gone, I'm just turbulated, I'm stressed, and I don't know what to do, and I'll go and get cheese from the fridge or whatever. You know? <laughs> we have our ways. At least, of- at least I've progressed to tea. <laughs> Okay. Just it was tea. Yeah. It was just tea. So now, as, some it, chocolate yeah, as it arises, I need to be aware of it. Observe thought, emotion, sensation, and and release. Let it go. And it's not oh, easy. But releasing was like. No, yeah, but it's not easy. And then I'm, emotions I, are powerful. But yeah, every time you do like, it, every time you practice that forgiveness or that letting go, 
you are healing your mind on a level, you see. So this is how the process works. As stuff arises and it's challenging, and as you're willing to let it go and you're willing to go through this process, you're shedding the ego's thought system and the, the energy of it because it's an energetic entity that's, that's got some kind of residence, <coughs> some kind of existence in your, in your body, mind, you know, and very deep-seated. So like, okay, well, you've just got to shed it layer by layer. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. But it just felt like it would come back with in a full force, like it would drop not even long, and then it comes back and like, <laughs> so it's like combat training. You know, you're in the matrix. Well, I don't even feel like I'm just like going, please just surrender, 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 <laughs> surrender, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and yeah, and like again, and then I'm just wondering, did it? Did any of that forgiveness work help? But or maybe, hopefully, maybe a little bit because, okay, I don't know. I'm going to find out soon. But it seemed more like there was sadness than just that, like mm. rampant rage. That by this afternoon, when an outcome which was wanted didn't work. Oh, yeah. yeah. So mm. you know, like, and again, then it's like, is it? Am I being? In an ego state to say, okay, I don't want to see that happen. You know? Well, I think the key thing is don't worry about the outcome. I know that's hard because, you know, we're all outcome, our ego is outcome obsessed, but it's actually coming out of yourself. So if you don't worry about the outcome, you say, look, my job is to forgive you. My job is to do this as these waves of emotion come up, I need to let them go. That's my job. And whatever needs to happen from that will happen if I really do that. Uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, because it's happening on an energetic level, that then has effects on everyone involved in the situation, which you can't really understand how, but it does. And um, it also opens you up to being inspired. So, okay, if I'm really letting go, then <clears throat> what's coming through my mind is now from the Holy Spirit. And maybe that's inspired action. You get you get a thought to do something, to say something that's actually genuinely inspired. And that's, that's really going to be helpful. But you need to be in that surrendered state. Yeah, experience. which is not going, should I, shouldn't I? You know, that, that's the ego. Should I, shouldn't I? No, don't worry about that. Just, okay, my job is to let go. My job is forgiveness. So, and as I let go and I do that more and more, then everything arises from that. So whatever guidance I need will come. And, you know, that's the trust. It's a trusting in, in God, yeah. trusting in the, the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Saying, okay, I don't really know. Because how can you know? You don't know what to do in situations like that. The complexity of them, so many people involved, it's like, how do you know what to do? If you try and work it out yourself, you're probably going to get it wrong. So you, you're asking for another intelligence, much higher intelligence to come in and speak to you and say, okay, well, show me, show me the way here. Show me how to do this. And I, cause I don't really know. And if you're really humble and you do that, it will speak to you. And, and it, it, the guidance can come in many ways. It can come in a little thought you get. It can come in someone telling you something. It can come in something you read. Can come in meditation. Can come in a signpost, a billboard. Um, sometimes it just unfolds. You don't do anything. It just something changes and it unfolds, and you know events unfold, and you're like, oh, actually, I didn't do that, but well, maybe you did. You know, you activate it. You allowed it to happen. Really. You know, you brought the healing through. That's why I'm saying the miracle of this job is to allow the Holy Spirit to come through them and express through them into the world. Rather than, well, what can I do? No, you know, I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to allow myself to be used. I'm going to allow myself to be done through here. I'm going to surrender and, you know, not my will, but thy will. That's the prayer. Uh, that uh, daily prayer that uh, I include in each email is a very useful one, especially in situations like this. Yeah. I mean, I use it. Mm. It just felt maybe, yeah. Well, maybe it's just you know, part of this is just dropping your own expectation of an outcome. 
Mm -hmm. No expectation of a certain outcome. Like, well, my only job here is to forgive. So as this stuff arises, I'm able to let it go. And my, my job is yeah. to let it go. That's my job. Simple. You know, one thing I have to do. Not easy. It's probably the hardest thing you'll do, but that's what I have to do. So let me focus on what I have to do and I leave everything else to the Holy Spirit. I think that's where we see what happened on, on, on the level of form and then that fear comes up like, you know, I mean, I, even on the level of form, I still feel like my message, what I would want to have said was, okay, it's around the forgiveness as well, but also just to say like, you know, the past is the past, we can let that go and, and you know, you, you can, you have the power to decide what you want to do next is not up to someone else, which you're putting that, projecting it onto someone else, mm -hmm. putting that blame because it's like a lash out or cry for like love really. But mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But then, uh, you know, it's like, well, it's also sort of, it's, it's also putting an expectation there, you know, saying what I want to, to look like, but it's also just, it's concern going, okay, is it what's more important for you, getting that justice or, you know? Do you prefer to be right? Or, and sorry? No, Jesus says, do you prefer to be right or happy? That's, that's, yeah, I mean, I once I found a link on an article around that. and But, you know, how well is that received when a person's angry? And they'll just be like, um, but, you know, it's, it's like, you want to say, well, what what price do you want to pay hmm. in a war who really wins really hmm. you know that was just what my thought process and that's what i want to share and um hmm. although i didn't well, the pyrrhic, uh, a pyrrhic victory you know what, what? pyrrhic victory what's that <clears throat> it means that you, you 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 fight the war you win the war but it's it's so costly yeah it's destroyed your you know your army. yeah what, what's it destroyed in the process you're yeah. losing so there's a, a you... thing or something called pyrrhus and he won a pyrrhic victory but it's like i mean like millions of men died and it basically destroyed his empire because he won the war but it's like <laughs> yeah and then what he's totally yeah, yeah, he won the war but he's like minute. totally exhausted you know yes and really and look what i've lost like it yeah. really wins. That's the thing. It's like yeah. So it's, it's not really yeah. a big. Well, this is the thing. You won't get. You probably won't get it anyway. But even if you do, we perceive you do. Look mm. what you've lost along the way. Mm. What can you? You know. Do you want to look back? And that's why I, I would, would would want to say like I, I want to prevent. I, I want to say to you, think about what you're doing. Is it worth it? Because do you want to look back in days, weeks, months, years, and mm. then? You can't, you won't be able to change it, forgive mm. it. So that would be, or maybe that's the healing of it. Mm. <sighs> you know, I mean, quite, quite a useful sort of tool is to say to someone, well, just fast forward to your deathbed. Like, let's say you're, you're on your deathbed, you, you're 90 now, you're on your deathbed and you're looking back at this time in your life. Mm. Like, would you be proud of what you're about to do? Or would you regret yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. That gives you a sense of perspective. It's like actually mm. on your deathbed, you have a sense of true perspective. And, you know, if she's not going to be proud of it and, and she would have a regret, then don't do it because. Yeah. But, you know, just, just try and be guided. Like, you know, don't, it, it's not for you. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to fix the situation. Yeah. You've just got to sort of allow, okay, Holy Spirit, you know, use me show me in, in whatever way that's helpful and try and try and try and be guided in what you do so it's not oh I, I, I now feel like i need to fix the situation and you go in there you know charging in like a bull in the china shop and potentially make it worse because it's, it's yeah so these things are never obvious but the more surrendered you are the more forgive forgiveness and letting go you do the more surrendered you are the more you're going to be able to listen to that genuinely inspired voice saying, mm. hey, you know, do this. And it comes as a still small voice. I think it's just like a, 
it's like a knowing okay all right so that there's a peace to it there's a knowing it's not there's no conflict but you need to yeah everything and just be open to that yeah it sounds like you care very much kim and i'm, I'm sure she feels that yeah i think she does although i got a bit of a sort of I guess again, it's it's very much ego and to, and, and I did, she did apologize afterwards, but like at one point she was angry and then she was yeah I, I can't not to get into it, but mm. yeah I mean I think it is this ego reaction, um, no. and I do really care for her, yes. Um, it's well, just hard through, to uh, see someone go through that because I know that they ego, came. It's ego, through. it's a hostile takeover by the ego. That's what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's like okay you've got it totally this and it's this right? yeah you've got to you've got to um ideally resist that and, and find a way to yeah. know, let go of all of those thoughts um but she if she hasn't had much spiritual training then well she has actually but it's it's this but it's i think there's there's certain stuff that runs very deep you know that probably needs even more like work it's not resolved Yet. Does she understand forgiveness? Probably not. I don't. I don't know how to to what. Yes, but yeah, she like more. It. Sorry. He doesn't apply it. On sexually, I think in some situations, maybe. you know, we we like stuff runs very deep on a fam familial level. Mm. You know. Um, and I think it also depends on what space one is in a, at the time as well. Mm. So it's like there's certain things that I guess get triggered, and this is one of those things. Mm. It's like a pattern. Yeah. And there is recognition of it, but it's like it's there's that kind of rage. Mm. It's and she's not generally an angry person but it's certain this just this, this kind of thing will set it off yeah yeah hi Ibuya. welcome back Ibuya. just in time to uh check in so what we generally do in these sessions start with in the evening ones anyway um is just do a little uh check-in so like whatever's arising for you in the day you don't have to share anything but anything arising any thoughts, any emotions that are difficult? Uh, Kim, have you, have you pretty much done with that, I think? Yeah, thank you, John. Um, so Kim's just been sharing about a difficult situation in her life with a friend. Yeah, anything, anything uh, you want to share? Or not, it's up to you. Oh, you, you mean me? Uh... Yeah, no, the other video, sitting next yeah. to you. Uh, sorry, I didn't get that, uh, yeah. John. No, no yeah. problem. I, I don't mind sharing. Yeah. Um, uh, greetings uh, to my brothers and sisters. How yeah. are you? Have you met Sue Good. and John? Um, were they in when you? I think. I beg you, you? Yeah, you did meet Sue and John because they were in when you joined. When? Oh yes. Oh yes. You were in when they joined. Um, yeah. Sue, and, Sue and John are in the UK at the moment. In the, Oh, um, yeah. In uh, Sus um, Suffolk. In mm. Suffolk in the UK. Oh, okay. Pleased to officially meet you again, uh, yeah. John and Mrs. John. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, call Mrs. John Sue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. John Sue. Oh, Sue. <laughs> okay, okay. My apologies. Thank you for correcting me, my good sir. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, anything to share? Yes, um, uh, the material that you've been sending to me has been quite helpful. Mm -hmm. um, this morning, I meditated on 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 the one for today, and uh, it 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 basically said to me, I need to. First of all, uh, forgive myself 
and uh, having forgiven myself then forgive the world and once i forgive the world then the world can forgive me as well so it was quite um a beautiful feeling to feel this morning that uh, after i had uh, listened to the clip and meditated on it um, it felt as though i i didn't have any anger with me i didn't have any that uh, you know a heart that is still uh, bearing grudges for someone in fact uh, mm. in almost two years i posted a picture of a brother of mine that i once worked with and uh, we really had a very uh, beautiful working relationship and uh Uh, i don't know how we we ended up uh, not working together um uh, he's actually the reason why i came to joburg uh, took my kids from north spate all the way that side so i've been uh, a person that's been carrying that because I, until today i don't know how um, i i got not to be working or getting what was true to me so i Mm. I was able to post a picture of him and uh, reminiscing only on the good and mm. I felt quite uh, beautiful to me and uh, having known exactly what uh, him and uh, his wife have done but it, it's, it's something that I felt this morning you know it's it's so light because i believe that there are also people that have wronged myself and some of them uh, have not even said it some of them i don't even know so who am i not to uh, you know let go uh, mm. as we were talking so the letting go part is has has really been uh, mm. quite helpful and uh, mm. i'm thankful for that Oh, well, well, yeah, well done for, uh, for for using the stuff I've sent you. <clears throat> it's yeah, it's yeah. only as good as, as the person who, who uh, is reading it and applying it. So, oh yes, the willingness um, to do it. it. Prior to meeting uh, a, a you, John, I was really on a quest to um, really try and quieten the noise around and. And really get to um, find myself and 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 the uh, you know the the greater purpose that I'm I was brought to this beautiful mm. world for, and um, unlike just surviving and mm. you know getting by, I, mm. I first need to be happy myself be- before I can really be happy for the people around me. And uh, I've mm. got quite a beautiful family. Uh, my wife and uh, uh, and five kids um, oh, yeah so there's just been quite a few things that we've been going through and uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, uh, I, I like I said the other day I, I definitely do believe in, in God so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm thanking God for our connection uh, mm-hmm. I think you've shared about three clips and all of them they are just you know on point mm. and uh, it's really helping someone like me uh, who like I've shared with you that uh, I've recently discovered another family so I'm feeling like uh, what they are saying about uh, uh, life begins at 40 is really happening with me as I'm about to turn 40 in January I feel like a brand new life mm. um, that is really free of anything, no negativity, no what. Because most of the time we uh, sort of allow people to treat us in a certain way uh, by being ourselves. So we cannot be then held responsible for, for what they do to mm. us. But how we take it, if, if they are calling me a dog and I know I'm not a dog, why should I even really care? And 
this, before taking the the entire session, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Jono. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's only a pleasure. Yeah? Uh, don't really thank me because it's just uh, it's God or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so you know, you're asking for some kind of guidance and help, and then we meet. It's not accidental. It's oh, not yeah. Work. Uh, we meet in whatever context. We met in a business context. Mm. And, uh, you know, that day I was like, hmm, should I send Vio this? Because I send these messages out to lots of people. It's like, yeah, why not? Yeah. And, uh, and that's, you know, you never know, you never know how people are going to take it. But mm. uh, obviously, yeah, it was, yes. you know, it was meant, meant, to, meant to go to you. Uh, and then you showed up tonight. And so, yeah, it's, it's yeah. all good. In fact, I was sharing with my wife this morning. I was like, hmm, I, I, I suspect something is happening here. God, is that you? Because um, my dad uh, made me meet, uh, you know, um, the CEO of uh, Get Back Swati, Swatin. Hmm. And then uh, I met with my daughter and we, we gelled, you know, business and all of that. Hmm. A lot of synergies. And then he told me about you. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, here we are, you know. So mm. the way it's been happening, uh, it's mm. been like uh, well orchestrated. Yeah. And it can only be the greater being. Mm. Thank you. Because <laughs> you don't plan these things. It just kind of happens. Yes. Kind of yes. yes. Um, which is uh, amazing when you, you know, because that's, that's the principle of flow or miracles I was talking about. It's just, you know, it happens by grace. So I think it's another word for it, it's grace. Oh, um, yes. Yes. Uh, but you have to be willing, you see. You have to be willing. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. willing, so. Yes. No, thank you. Once your uh, willingness. So. Yeah, well, welcome. Um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the session. So we um, had, our, had our little sharing. So we're going to uh, go into some reading. Um, I have a read of today's lesson, um, which I sent this morning. Um, so we're just going into the, some of the text of it, which will give you a taste for like actually what this book, A Course in Miracles, is about. Okay. Uh, and then we do a, um, a section of the text, which is the uh, theoretical side of it. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the... Into the where are we? Um, there we go. And so generally, we just take turns reading. So we just take turns reading the uh, text and share my screen. And any questions, comments, anything like that that you have. Can you see the screen yet or not? Uh, we can see the screen, but it's it's not the page you want to be showing, I don't think. Do yeah, know? registration form. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get, get on to the uh, correct page. <clears throat> it's not letting me click it. Okay, there we go. Catching up. Okay, um, there we go, finally. Can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, John, if you can start and kick us off with the verse paragraph, please. Yeah. The light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. My forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me. My forgiveness is the means by which I become aware of the light of the world in me. My forgiveness is the means by which the world is healed together with myself. Let me then forgive the world that it may be healed along with me. Okay. So anything stand out for you there or anyone? 
So often it's helpful if you just pick a sentence and speak to that sentence or if there's anything you're not sure about, then uh, please ask about it. Oh, Jenna. Yeah? Um, did you say anyone can read? Yeah, if, if, if anything in that... Uh, in, in that paragraph struck you oh okay you were like it made an impact on you or you're not sure about anything for questions and please ask for me it was really that uh, number five uh, mm. well it, it, it's all of it but uh, let me then forgive the world that it may be healed along with me um, i love I, I love it because it's not just about me it's really about you know if you can just find one one less violent or one kind uh, person you know than what we are really having um currently as, as, as the human race. Obviously we are experiencing um, mental uh, disasters uh, when it comes to this uh, COVID, but I'm, I'm basically saying it, the whole uh, paragraph really resonated with me. Mm. Yeah. It's, well, it's, still what I've, it's still what I've shared uh, earlier on. Yeah. In, in, in a few in a few lines you know, it just shows you the power of words they, they can really mm. make a deep impact on you. Um, <clears throat> and these are just you know this is just a very very small part of the entire book mm. uh, it's like it goes on but this is this is how it goes like every sentence is meaningful every sentence has meaning yes. and power and so you if you contemplate it and you meditate on it it, it does change your mind That's why it's a, a mind training process. Mm -hmm. What I like about this, he's saying, let me then forgive the world. It's taking responsibility. Let me yeah. then do this. Yes. I'm not waiting mm -hmm. for someone else to do this. With some external... Want to do it first. <laughs> yeah, you forgive first. No, let yes. me then do this. That it may be healed along with me. Because how can the world... Be healed and be at peace if I'm not. Mm. Because everyone must be healed. So, like, but I take the responsibility to do it for myself. And, um, and then it, it unfolds, it, it radiates up from me. That it may be healed along with me. So then you're playing your part in the healing of the world rather than in the damnation of the world. Mm. Because there's only two choices here. It is the same very clearly. There's, there's two thought systems here. There's two ways of seeing things, ways of doing things. The one is the spirit of light, of love, truth, God, many words for it. The other one is what he calls the ego, uh, the voice for a separate self. Um, in Christian teaching, they call it the devil, Satan. You know, it's, it's a voice that is very twisted and very distorted and is getting you to, to move away from love and light and peace and into uh, negativity, into fear and anger and hatred and attack thoughts and judgment and et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> um, and you have to choose. You can't, you can't have both of those in your mind at the same time. The one denies the other. So that's really the essential teaching, uh, which, which is then non-dual. He's saying, actually, duality comes from the ego, but the ego is not real. All of that that comes from the ego is, is simply not true and it's not real. Therefore, you can let it go or forgive it. And you can be at peace because what's real is eternal. What's real is in, always in your mind. It always has been. And that's what forgiveness or letting go does. Is it restores your mind to that, to its true nature. Mm. It's, a, it's a simple teaching, but it's powerful. Mm. Powerful because there's truth there. 
And ultimately, they, yeah, they are only, if you observe the world carefully, you see there's only two thought systems. There's only two ways of viewing it. There's love and there's fear. I'm either going to view the world from a loving place and I'm going to come from that state of mind and I'm going to think and act and speak from that state or I'm going to be fearful, which is limiting, contracted, that <clears throat> fear and attack and hatred, all, they all go together. One thought system. And I have a choice. But how does one uh, remain in, in that space, Jono, when, when the world is, is, is cruel out there? Um, oh, because, because not that I want to, but I, I just... This is the mind training, you know? How, indeed, how? It's not an easy thing. Mm. But Jesus is training you to do that. So what mm. he's saying is if you perceive correctly, you simply see that these cruel things that happen on the, in the seemingly external world are really just a projection. I use that word again. It's, it's the mind creating this. This ego mind has created all of this or miscreated all of this. It's a projection of this false idea, this false thought system. So when you see it for what it is, look, all of this is just false. Then I don't need to, I don't need to value this. I don't need to make it important or real. I don't need to let it affect my true nature because that's actually all that's going on. The entire world was made up to cover over the kingdom of heaven. Right? That's, that's the teaching here. The world was a, is a projection of a mind that is insane and that is not real and it's not true. And so now it's projecting all of this cruel stuff out, but it's a projection of a false mind, of a false idea, you see? And that's what he's saying. If you can see it for what it is, that all of this is just false and untrue, then you're automatically letting it go. Because why would you value the false and the untrue? Why would you give it uh, truth and reality in your mind? When it's not, help, it's not helpful, those ideas do not help you or anyone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help anyone to think angry thoughts, to, to, to think thoughts of attack. And fear and hatred and it doesn't help anyone so these are illusions these ideas are what he calls illusions they're not true they're unreal they have no absolute reality or substance which is why you can let them go because they're not true so as you become aware of them you then say well through this process of letting go of forgiveness i i let them go I, I release the thoughts. I don't have to think those thoughts. I don't have to feel the emotions. It's not always easy to do because mm. you know, going around and around and you've done it for many, many years, it's not easy to do. But these, these lessons, this, this entire workbook is designed to train your mind to do that systematically. So you use the lessons and then I just you know, incorporate meditation and breath breaks to help you to do that process with whatever's arising in your life use the lesson to, to help you to let it go so that you find that underlying peace and stillness which is always there because that's eternal it's never changed it's, it's not going away it's just been covered over it's been obscured by all of the uh the dark thoughts and emotions which the world seems to justify you see so it's kind of it's kind of cunning i mean i, I think was it paul in the bible he said you know this is this is the domain of of the devil this this world is the devil's world um it's the world of the ego it's made up to uh be a, it's a projection of this thought system of separation and all these things now get projected out and they get reflected back to you and then you go oh it's out there but it's not really out there it's actually in your own mind you see it's in your own subconscious you're just not aware of it you've hidden it you've repressed it and now it seems to show up in your world and then, it, and then, and then that that step gets gets triggered. See that 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 negativity that projected it out gets triggered by whatever the projection is. So someone treats you badly. You mentioned you know your brother treated you badly, he's wronged you. So now you get triggered and you get angry, mm -hmm. and you feel that anger arising. Okay, but actually that anger was always there. It was just subconscious. You weren't aware of it consciously you see mm. so actually now 
the projection, here's the genius of this teaching, that projection in the world, you see it for what it is. You see, this is actually a projection of my subconscious mind. That's pretty helpful, isn't it? Because mm. now I'm seeing my anger manifest. So it's no longer hidden. It's, it's there. It's in my experience. And it's now being triggered. So it comes up. It's arising. So now I'm aware of this. It's no longer being repressed. And so in the awareness of it, I can now, in the conscious awareness of it, I can choose to let it go. Whereas if it was hidden and repressed, then I can't let it go. You see? See how it mm. works? Yes. That's actually very, very clever. Because the, the very thing that the ego is going to use to, to make you suffer, apparently, get you angry, get you into all these negative states, the external world is the very thing that now the Holy Spirit says, but this is exactly how you're going to let all the stuff go and you're going to heal your mind. You see? Amen. You need, those, <laughs> you need those situations to trigger you to make the stuff arise. Now it comes up and now it's in your conscious awareness. It's not pleasant, but you can let it go. You can say, I don't, I don't have to think these thoughts. I don't have to believe this. And so you start dropping the thoughts and the emotions that are really all that this ego is made up of. So you actually want to welcome these things that trigger you. You welcome them. So you bring it on. Because as it comes up, I can then look at it and I can forgive it or let it go. And that heals my own mind, which is really the whole point. You, you, you know, you're here to heal your mind. Mm -hmm. And we need, the, we need our life situation and our circumstances to to help us to do that it doesn't happen otherwise so that's the purpose of your life it's the healing of your mind and all your life circumstances and situations that you experience are, are for that which is why he says forgiveness is my only function yesterday's lesson forgiveness is my only mm. function as the light oh, of yeah. the mm. yeah that's my only function that's why i'm here is to do this process of being aware of, of the stuff that I need to let go of and then let it go. That's a very different way of looking at the world. Yes. But it <laughs> works to bring peace as you've, as you've experienced. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions on the first paragraph? Light will peace to every mind. They're saying, look, this light can bring peace to every mind. So, and then when you forgive, then you're allowing that to happen. You're, being, you're part of the healing of, uh, of everyone. <laughs> Your forgiveness is the healing of the world. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Vuya, if you can read the, the next paragraph, just those few ideas. And number two, suggestions for specific forms. Um, oh, okay, I see that. Uh, suggestions for specific forms of applying this idea um, are let peace extend from my mind to yours. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with the name. Well, then you name the person. So it's an exercise. So you would say... Um, let peace Let extend peace from my mind, mind to yours and you, you know, name the person in, in question. You, you have some conflict. Uh, let, let peace mind extend. Training. Oh, yes. Oh, it's just, okay. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. My wife. Yeah, whoever, yeah. Bring someone to mind. I shall share the light of the world with you, my wife. Through my forgiveness, I can see. I can see this as it is. Through my forgiveness, I can see this as it is. Okay. So, see the situation as it truly is, and the person as it truly is, as they truly are. Should I carry on reading? Ah, uh, no. Uh, we'll okay. give him a chance. Okay. 
So any questions about that? I mean, just you, you can see he's using words very skillfully. Mm. So, same idea, but then he's just getting you to change the idea a bit and, and, and use it in different contexts. So you, you really start to think about it. You know, each, each, each sentence is, a, is another take on it, um, which is why it's mind training. As, as you contemplate these ideas, okay, you start to make sense of it. You're making sense. You have another thought system. It's another way of thinking about the world. <clears throat> okay, Kim, if you can read the next paragraph for us, please. Let me not forget my function. I would not forget my function because I would remember myself. I cannot fulfill my function if I forget it. And unless I fulfill my function, I will not experience the joy of God that God intends for me. Okay, let me stand up for you there. Yeah, and unless I fulfill my function, I will not experience the joy that God intends for me. Mm. Hmm. Your function is forgiveness. And so you see how they're all connected. Forgiveness or letting go is your function. That leads you to an awareness of who you really are, your true self. And when you have that, then you experience joy and you experience peace. And so the more you forgive, the more you come to know who you really are and the happier you become. Which is why, as I said, you know, we're letting go is, is, the, is the key skill. Letting go or forgiveness is your function. Because if you can do that, then everything else comes. You, experience, you can experience happiness, peace, joy um, that, that, that God intends for you. That's there for you. It's waiting. It's in your mind. But you, you've, got to, you've got to let go of the blocks to it. See that? And that's what this whole teaching is about. It's just letting go of the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. So you need to let go of those and then you don't have to create love. Love just comes. It's there already. It, it will shine through your mind. Mm. But you have to let go of what's blocking it in your awareness, which is all the egos, you know, fear, anger, hatred, attack thoughts, negativity in any form that blocks that awareness. So saying, remember, your function is simply to forgive. That's why you're here. It's kind of simple. If that's, if that's my only function, Life becomes quite simple because we like to make it complex. Well, you know, I'll have to do this and this. So, um, you know, just remember that in any situation, Kim, in your situation, your function is to forgive. If you're doing that, you, you're fulfilling your function. Mm. Just trust that everything will flow from that. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Sue, if you can read the last paragraph, if she's there. Sue, is Sue still with, with you, John? It's awesome to unmute. Or they gone away. Uh, Sue, I'm here, actually. Yeah. No? Has Sue... Has Sue um... She's just having a little nap. Right, okay. She's tired. Okay, well, if you can read the last paragraph, please. Yeah. Suitable specific forms of this idea include, let me not use this to hide my function from me. I would use this as an opportunity to fulfill my function. This may threaten my ego, but cannot change my function in any way. Anyway, okay, does any of those ideas stand out for you? Yeah, just like that, let me not use this to hide my function from me. It kind of summarizes the, the situation, really. Mm. Very, very much along the line that you've been talking about, John. Mm. 
Because the, the, the parent situation, the external world, is the justification for hiding your function. Yeah. Buya, when he said, well, well, how do you do this in a cruel world? But the world is set up to do that, to hide your function, from, to hide your light. So the more you focus on the world, the more it hides your true function, which is to let all that go and, and, and find the light in. The world yeah. is, remember, it's the covering over the light. The ego doesn't want you to find the light, so it wants, you, it wants to keep you in the darkness of, of this external world. It makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah it does. It's the only thing that does make sense. <laughs> you try and make sense of the world, it doesn't make sense. Like, so why, why would God, who's a loving God, create a world where we are seemingly doomed to, uh, to suffer and to die? Like, why would God do that? And, you know, Jesus' answer is, well, God didn't do that. God wouldn't do that. This is your own delusion. This is your own mind that's made all this stuff up. Uh, in opposition to God, you've created a, a, another world. And you believed in that so much that you've created an entire world from it. And a personal identity and a separate self and a body and all of this. And yet, the truth is still there. The truth is, is because it's eternal. It remains in you. And your only job, only function is to remember that. So I would use this as an opportunity to fulfill my function. Your situation is an opportunity to fulfill your function. So if something's really difficult and challenging, go, great, bring it on. This is another opportunity. But it's a big opportunity. Because the more, the more interbulated and upset and unhappy I feel, <clears throat> the more the release is going to be when I, when I let it go. And I've let go of, of a an, an, you know big part of the ego if I, if I if I get through this and I let it go. And he says this may threaten my ego, but cannot change my function in any way. So <clears throat> you can feel threatened. Only the ego can really feel threatened. So we feel fear, we feel that contraction, and he's saying, well, okay, this may threaten my ego, but it really cannot change my function in any way doesn't matter what the ego thinks. My function is still to, to let it go and to find the light that lies beyond it. Mm. Okay, so... No, no. Yeah? Yeah. Question? Yeah, just from earlier today, it's like, okay, so for me, not like number three was probably the most pertinent. Yeah. I would use this opportunity to fulfill my function, but it was like, and then for the, the the first lesson, you know, saying, you know, two people's names there, you know, their piece extend from my mind to yours, and I'd say, you know, mm. two people's names. Yeah, it was just, sometimes it felt like, it's like less peaceful, but more desperation, <laughs> to make sense, because yeah, it does. Yeah. The ego doesn't go away quickly. So, you know, you're doing these exercises and the reason you need to do them is because the ego is still there in your mind. If you were totally enlightened, you wouldn't need the exercises, would you? Yeah. So there, there's, a, there's a resistance. There's a difficulty. There's a, like a, you can feel that as you're doing that, but, but that's, that's, that's why you need to do them. And that's why they, they work. So the more you do them, the more there's even a little letting go, even a little bit of, okay, I'm actually feeling a little bit of that peace. You're starting to undo that, that whole thought system. It's like a, a great dark block to your sight, Jesus calls it. It's like just piece by piece, you're cutting it away, just shaving. So think of a sculptor. And to use an analogy for you, this, is, this isn't so much like painting a masterpiece. It's like, it's like sculpting a masterpiece. Because right? the difference in sculpture is you cut away stuff. So they asked Michelangelo, you know, sculpted the, the David, probably the most famous sculptor in history. I said, how, you know, how do you do it? And he said, well, all I do is I cut away what's not the David. See? So he just cuts away 
what's not true, what's not authentic, all those sharp edges. And, and then what's revealed is the truth, is the true self. So it's this patting away process of letting go, kind of let go of that belief, I'm going to let go of that thought, I'm going to let go of identifying with that, I'm going to let go of that attachment. As they arise, because how else do you let them let go of them unless you become aware of them? See, so a situation like this for you, Kim, it's beautiful, it's brilliant. You got to go bring it on, because <laughs> I know it doesn't feel like that, but actually, if you want enlightenment, you want total peace, then then these resident thoughts and emotions, which are egoic, need to be dealt with. And so the situation is helping you to do that. So your friend is actually. She is really your greatest friend. She's, she's triggering all of this stuff so that you can do this work. Because if it was all just going along as normal, smoothly, then you don't really have to dig deep, too. You don't have to really go, okay, mm -hmm. I, I really need to get to grips with this forgiveness thing. I, you know, I really need to do this. I remember you, I actually remember you saying this. You asked for this because a couple of weeks ago you said, well, I'm kind of doing the mind training. There's, there's nothing really there. I'm not really. I'm not really feeling anything, so I kind of have to invent it. <laughs> I didn't invent it, to try to... <laughs> I think anyway, I was also no, thinking, no, I you, think you, I was having a little bit of a it was better. Um, I was quite happy in that space. Thank no, you. There's, there's not really anything there. So now I was like, okay, but now now you've got lots to work with. You don't have to go and search too hard. It's like it's all coming up, you see. So and that's good, because then you become aware of the stuff. So okay, well, you don't have to invent it. These emotions are you know, raging around in your in your in your mind, and then you can just okay. Well, this is the practice. You know, observe, observe the sensation, observe the emotion, observe the thought, observe the belief. Okay, now I'm starting to get some. I'm starting to see the core beliefs that are behind this. You see, so that might be a useful um, thing for you if you remember. It's Observe sensation. So in the body, you observe your sensation because any strong emotion has a sensation attached to it, right? If you feel any strong emotion, you feel sensation in the body. That's how you experience it. So sensation leads to emo an awareness of emotion, leads to an awareness of thought, okay? So emotion is always connected with thought. I'm like, I'm feeling like really angry. Okay, so what thoughts am I thinking? And you're thinking thoughts like... This person just, I can't stand them. I want to kill them, whatever. Okay, so now I see the thought. Now you go to belief because belief is at the underpinning of all the thoughts and the emotion. You go, okay, so what must I believe to be thinking and feeling this way? And then you start to uncover this belief system. Well, I, I believe this person should be doing this. Why do you believe that? Well, because they're my friend. Okay, well, why do you believe? Okay, are they really your friend? You know, so you start to question all these things. And then, and then you go, in the end, you go, but actually maybe that belief, that expectation just simply wasn't justified. Maybe I, I shouldn't be expecting them to behave in a certain way. And when you see that, then you start to drop the core belief system that, that's driving the whole thing. So it's a very powerful practice, this. You can really get to the absolute core because it's ultimately your beliefs that are causing you problems. It's not anyone else. It's your, it's your belief that then interprets that situation in a certain way that then leads to the, uh, the, 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 the problematic feeling that, that you have to deal with. Okay. I think so that that's uh, a bit confusing. Some, uh, apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not clear for me what the belief is, unless it's. Well, do some inquiry on it. So unless... when you did the naming your game exercise and the letting go course, there were a whole lot of beliefs that came up. No false yeah, beliefs. that's what I'm wondering if it's around that ultimately, but because it all leads to the same, right? But <clears throat> it's all about your belief in who you are as a separate self. That's the problem. So what am I believing? that's causing me these, these problems? Why am I getting upset by, upset, upset by this? Why am I getting triggered? And yeah. in the inquiry, you, you start to see that, you know, false self, this isn't really me. 
I might have believed it was me, you know, the old Kim, but it's not really me. So those thoughts of anxiety, that expectation, maybe wanting to be the helper to fix. Okay, just look at all of that. Is that really me or can I just let, let those, those beliefs go? And if you let the beliefs go, then you find peace in the situation because the beliefs are no longer causing you to interpret the situation in a certain way. See, that, 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 that's how it works. So now you unpick your beliefs. That's what forgiveness is doing. It's letting go of the core belief system that is at the foundation of the ego. Mm. Which isn't, this isn't a quick, easy thing, right? You're talking about your identity here. But that's what you're doing. So just be patient with this. Okay, just step by step, moment by moment. If I keep letting go, I'm trusting that I'm doing this. And that the, 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 the uh, spirit then reveals what you need to, to know. As you forgive more, you see more. You feel more peace. You connect more with your true self. Uh, and then you're able to extend that as well. The light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. Okay, so uh, any questions on, uh, on this one? On this lesson, on these two lessons, really? All right, so let's have a look at the text. Uh, the time's cracking on. Has everyone still got time, or do you want to... Um, I mean, we've got eight paragraphs. Okay. I'm up for it if you are. Do you want to, want to go through this? I, I just feel like saying I think women often feel such deep empathy for, for one another, Kim, that uh, it, it's... Uh, you obviously have a deep feeling for your friend. Mm -hmm. I do. And then you, you kind of feel her pain. And, and you know, that's because mm -hmm. right? it's like a sharing of the, but it, it, it's still the ego's thought system. See, all yeah. pain. Ego. So it's being triggered in you. It's, it's one thought system that you're both trying to get out of and try, both trying to let go of and heal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the only way you can help her is to let go of your own pain. You can't help her if you're in pain. I have to just remember that, like, mm. you know, this is kind of a, I guess, a, a newer way of working with a situation like this. Mm. Um, it's a very different way of looking at everything. Yeah. So, and that's the mind training. It's like, okay, remember that this, this, is, the, this is the truth. Remember to see it this way and don't get sucked in to that old interpretation of it, which just brings about you know a lot of pain and suffering for you and her. You can't help her if you're if you're drowning with her. How can you help her? Yeah, you can only help her if you outside of the water. You're on a boat and you can go right. I can stick my hand down, so maybe my hand's got to go into the water, but I'm not going to the water. Yeah. Otherwise, you both drown together in the, in the misery. Yeah. It's almost like she wants to, I mean, a classic, you know, in a, in a drowning situation, they say that the, the danger is the drowning person pulls the other person down. Yes. And they drown them too because it's like, I'm so deaf, you know, so, so now we both drown together. Just kind of it sounds like what she's doing. She wants to pull you into a vortex of negative energy. And you have to transcend that. You have to remain above that. Mm. Which means forgiveness raises your, your mind up into this, higher domain, higher self, where you can see it with compassion, with empathy, but not allow that pain to move you, not allow yourself to be drawn down into the darkness of that, of that emotion. Because you can't really help her from that point. You can only yeah. help her from the light. Mm. She, for the light, you need to be the light and demonstrate the light so that she can find her way. If, yeah. if you suck you into the darkness, then there's no hope for either of you. Yeah. No, I mean, what, what you're saying makes complete sense. I think it's just, it's the practical application of it. And, and I think it's also, you know, I mean, 
what we're talking about is, is doing this, these mind training exercises and forgiveness, but when you actually, you know, with that person in a conversation, it's like, and then like that example I was giving, you know, today of what I want to do, it's, you know, it, I, I mean, I, I take what you're saying, our spirit for that guidance. I think I just have to just be more very conscious of doing that. But if you, one's in the situation, the, the conversation, okay, so maybe one, one, one thing to do is just the breathing. Um, yeah. But yeah, just the actual conversation, what, what you verbalize. <laughs> well, I before, say, you know, you use me. Jesus said to his disciples before they went out, he said, don't worry about what you're going to say because the Holy Spirit will guide you. So just wherever you go, you know, trust that it's with you. The Spirit will guide you. You'll, you'll, you'll know what to yeah. say. You'll know what to do. Um, he's trying yeah. to put them you know, in this charge of a presence that is there, but it, it needs yeah. you to surrender. If you're still going, oh, well, what should I do? You're trying to work it out consciously. You block that. So it's almost like, okay, before conversation, do some breathing, do a breath break, get into a nice state of mind. Okay, now I'm, I'm just open. Like, use me. Like, show me, use me. And, and then you carry that presence with you into the conversation. So she will feel that. There's, there's, there's a shift that's happened. because Yeah. You don't necessarily get drawn in. If, she, if she's speaking, you could just observe, okay, observe your own, your own uh, sensation and your own emotions. Okay, I'm, I'm watching my breath. I'm observing. Right, that that's what this practice trains you to do. If I'm if I'm in that observer state, then I'm not getting sucked into it. I can just observe. Okay, just observe sensation arising. Okay, but it's just a sensation. I don't have to allow that to have all this power to uh, to draw me in. Mm. And then I stay in that transcendent place, that clear, calm place. And I'll give you an example. So. Um, from uh, it was it was a, the guy who was the kind of coordinator or facilitator on the Vipassana retreat. At the end of it, we we're sharing a story. So he's a quite a young guy; he's in his twenties or so, and um, he's obviously a little bit alternative. He's basically decided to go live there, and you know he's got long hair and a ponytail and all that. So you can imagine that maybe like a more conservative father might not appreciate <laughs> that kind of. Um, which is what he was sharing. So he said his, his dad was 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 um, standing in front of him and he was he was having a full go. He was really aggressive and he was attacking him verbally. And he said, because he'd had all this Vipassana training, you know, he'd done hours and hours of Vipassana meditation, he was able just not to say anything, he didn't say anything. He just observed. He went within, he observed his breath, he observed the sensations in the body. And he just sat with it. He was like, okay, I'm just observing my own breath, sensations, emotions. I'm not trying to change my dad. I'm not trying to say anything to him. I'm just in that space of presence. And he said within a, a, a minute or so, it just the whole energy just quietened down. And his dad sat down and he quietened and he stopped being angry. And then they had a conversation. Just because he was able to maintain that presence and go, okay, I'm just... I'm just going to look at him and I'm just observing my breath and my emotion, my sensation, and I'm not reacting to it. I'm just in that observer state. It changed the energy of the conversation. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Well, he did do something, but he, he just went within and he observed. And he went into that equanimous state rather than, you know, he said before he'd done the passion, he would have got all stressed and then he would have reacted and he would have gone, you know, fearful, um, maybe said something inappropriate and because he had that training it's just, okay I'm just gonna and just his presence his dad had to it was like the presence brought him down into a, a calmer state so try that you know? mm -hmm. just if she's going and she's spinning out you just go okay right, I'm just gonna observe observe my emotion observe, sens observe sensation observe breath Observe sensation in the body, what's arising. Keep watching the breath and just sit with that. And then, okay, it's uncomfortable emotion arising. Okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm just observing that. I'm in that space. And because you're that, that, that present, that, that will change the energy of the conversation, which may then open her up to 
like she may just drop some of that and find some some peace herself but you mm -hmm. know that's the best way honest because you're changing men things on an energetic level you're not yeah. trying to change on a level of form it's it's an energy because mm -hmm. she's connected with you energetically so now mm -hmm. your energy she must change on some level she will because she picks up on energy she's quite she's an empath like that yeah. really so if you're in that real presence that's mm -hmm. going to help her to drop all of her interbulated you know emotion and, and and just maybe find some of that and then and then now you're communicating from that place because you bring her into that state of mind mm -hmm. but it's your job as a miracle worker to do that because you you're more trained in this more skilled so you're like okay well I, i need to really be on my game here i really need to observe emotion sensation observe sensation remember the sequence observe breath observe emotion observe sensation observe emotion then observe thought uh, and beliefs and if you're just observing all of that you don't have to judge it you, just that presence changes the energy of the conversation And then you might find there's some openness. And then, then mm -hmm. from that state of mind, so instead of being desperate to, from that state of mind, now you share what you want to share. Mm -hmm. It's not a receptive state. So try oh, it. Yeah. Oh, because I brought in that presence. Yeah, it exactly. also if you share it. like a sp spiritual teaching, but you're in, you're in a, uh, an interbulated state yourself, yeah. it's not going to be that effective, is it? No, I, the message, I, yeah. message doesn't match the state of the messenger. Yes. And, and you really, you know, you, you want it to be in alignment. It's integral. So she yeah. goes, actually, I'm feeling, Kim, I'm feeling that there is a presence. I'm feeling that, you know, you actually are in that state of calmness. And, and, and that's yeah. helped me to find a bit of that. Mm -hmm. And now you bring that with your voice. You, you, you know, you, you talk about the principles and so on. <clears throat> It's going to be much more meaningful. And if you're like, well, Tracy, just you just kind of got to let it go, you know? And you're all like, know. like, and I watch your energy, like in our conversation yesterday, and it's quite, you know what I mean? There's quite a lot of that interbulated energy going on in you. Yes. So it's like, you can just be that still calm presence yeah. for her, then you can help her to come into that state herself. And now you have a conversation from that deeper state, that altered state, Whatever you say is going to be much, much better received in that state. And, oh, I need to fix this. So, yes, you know the spiritual principles and you try and communicate them, but it's coming from a state of mind that's actually not a forgiven state. It's not a surrendered state. Yeah. So the message yeah. doesn't match the state of the messenger. So your yeah. first is be first. Be in that state. Yeah. Before you try and teach it, be in that state yourself. Yeah. Your first priority, get in that state, stay in that state. Now, from that state, now I speak, now I act. And that's the Holy Spirit guiding you. And you may say the same thing, but you're going to say it differently. Yeah. And I have Absolutely. a different quality to it. Mm. You know, just, just presence. I think, I think the reason why like, the masters like Jesus and Buddha, why they had such an impact, was it's coming from that state of presence. They mm. are in that state. So their words... Are just extending that state of presence. Yeah. And then people listen because they're like they can feel that that is totally authentic. That that they're not just saying it. It's like it's coming from the depths of their being, mm -hmm. and, and there's a genuineness and a sin 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 sincerity and a transmission of that energy that happens in that process. Hundred uh, so, percent, and I. I know this afternoon I was starting to feel just like with almost teary. So I don't know. It was, yeah, it pr probably wouldn't have, it probably would have showed my, my care on that, the form level, but not the kind of calm sympathy. presence. Sympathy and empathy is a difference. Yeah. Right? Sympathy, you join the person in their suffering. Oh, shame, poor you, you know, you're drowning with them in their, mm. in their emotions. It's not really helping them. Empathy is like, okay, I, I see, I can observe, but I'm, I'm coming from the observer place. And I'm, I'm not interbulated in the same way as you are, which mm -hmm. means I can help you to get out of that situation into a, into a higher state. 
And there's a very important distinction between those. Mm. Empathy means you need to be in your own power. You need to be in your own presence. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm there. And yes, okay, from that state, I can see this person is suffering. Okay, I, maybe I can help them. I can extend a hand. How can I be truly helpful? You, you know, that's the prayer of the miracle work. But you're not in that state yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise, how can you help her? And I think part of what's happening with you is she's pulling you into that state yourself. So now you're sharing those emotions and you're feeling turbulated. And then, you know, yeah. how do you help her? Because mm. both in that situation. Mm. So you've, you've just really got to like, okay, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to transcend this. Let, let go, let the Holy Spirit do it. Find that equanimity, find that peace. I use these tools like watching the breath, watching sensation, just help you stay in that. So it's just a calm serenity. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. It doesn't matter with all this turbulation having. I'm serene and I'm peaceful. And now from that place, I, you can really be truly helpful to. Now that's your task, is to find that mm -hmm. place, find that state in your own mind. If you can do it, then everything's going to just unfold from there. Okay, so how are we doing? Uh, let's have a little read of this, if we're still up for that. Um, so, Kim, do you want to read paragraph one? Never forget that the sonship is your salvation, for the sonship is yourself. As God's creation, it is yours, and belonging to you, it is his. Yourself does not need salvation, but your mind needs to learn what salvation is. You are not saved from, from anything, but you are saved for glory. Glory is your inheritance given to you by your creator that you might extend it. Um, yet if you hate part of yourself, all your understanding is lost because you are looking on what God created as yourself without love. And since what he created is part of him, you are denying him his place in his own altar. Okay. Makes sense to you? Anything stand out or anything not 100% sure about? Six quite stands out. Yet if you hate part of yourself, all your understanding is lost because you are looking on what God created as yourself without love. Yeah, Did just stand out for you. You had a question about it? Um, yeah, like if you, I mean, you, it, it's just, Yeah, it's quite pertinent if you say if you even have part of yourself, all your understanding is lost. Mm. So you're looking at yourself without love, which is what God created. Yeah, and yourself is actually everyone. So if you hate anyone or anything, all your understanding is lost because hatred and love cannot coexist, one or the other. Yeah. Since what he created is part of him, you're denying him his place in his own altar. So you are not, God's not allowed in here. We keep, we keep love out. Yeah. And then we feel alone and we feel separate and, and, and we feel bereft. And, but actually, it's you doing it. You, you're keeping that presence away instead of inviting it in. Denying him his place in his own altar means that your mind is the altar to God. Your mind is, is a mind of love and light. And there's now some kind of alien world that's just denying that presence in you, not, not, not allowing it in. Which is, you know, what's going on for you. It's like, okay, but 
with great temptation. I mean, there's all this external stuff happening, but it's still your decision to allow it or not, you see. Are you going to deny the truth of love and light in you because apparently it's justified in the situation? Or are you going to go, it doesn't matter. All this stuff is just a smoke screen. I, I, can, I can drop all of that and I can allow this light and love that I really am to shine through even in the situation. Um, yeah, I think even more in the context of my friend, like this really applies, I think, mm. the way I explained it. Mm. She's hating a part of herself by hating so. someone else. How can you hate, if we are all one, how can you hate another person and go, but I'm still one? If we are one, you can't. The two are mutually exclusive. You hate someone. You now have separated yourself off from them. They are seen as an enemy, and oneness is destroyed. You think you think good yourself from them. That's what hate does, and that's why I'm saying all your understanding is lost. You then do not understand who you are. You don't understand who they are. You don't understand anything really because you're believing in an illusion of separation. It's simply not true. She's yeah. looking on what God created as herself without love. That's what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And her ego is loving it, but uh, she's in pain. She's suffering because of it. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You cannot, cannot hate someone else and not hate yourself. So then yeah. you're just attacking yourself. It's self-hatred. And it's just to recognize, like, when you see that so clearly, it becomes like, oh, my God, I've just been such an idiot. <laughs> what have I been doing? I've been hating myself. So maybe you can, you know, just bring her into that awareness of like, yeah, just you know, see this. Because if she can see it for herself, it's like, okay, I, I, maybe I just, I get it. I see what I'm doing to myself. Then the delusion stops the moment you see that. So, yeah, I mean, if you can, if you can bring Bring her into that state, receptive state, and then maybe share some, some of this, you know, this, this particular section if it's meaningful with her, maybe. maybe. Mm -hmm. And just do your best, you know. It's not, it's not an overnight job. She's probably not suddenly going to wake up, but just a little, a little glimpse. If she's just willing to consider something like this, mm -hmm. that's a start. They're just willing to consider another another way of looking at the situation. Then that's a start. You know, the healing's begun. If you can help her to do that, then that's mm. part of the miracle. Okay. Um, so, John, if you can read number two for us, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Could you try to make God homeless and know that you are at home? Can the son deny the father without believing that the father has denied him? God's laws only hold only for your protection. And they never hold in vain. What you experience when you deny your father is still for your protection. For the power of your will cannot be lessened without the intervention of God against it. And any limitation on your power is not the will of God. Therefore, look only to the power that God gave to save you, remembering that it is yours because it is his. And join with your brothers in his, in his peace. Okay, anything stand out for you? I think I'm a bit bemused by that number two, actually. Can the son deny the father without believing that the father has denied him? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <clears throat> Why does it bemuse you? Well, I can just imagine that the son would deny the father, but not necessarily. I don't understand why he would deny, why he would think that the father's denied him. 
he could just deny the father. Because, oh, oh, we, yeah, okay. because we project it. See, this is the ego. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Instead of going, I've done this, which is taking responsibility, in which yeah, case you can blame it on him. I denied my source or my father. So, yeah. it might, you know, I just need to stop doing that. Uh, then the ego goes, no, it's, 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 out, it's outside of you. The, the father, the source has denied you. So we have that, you know, story of the, the rejection of God, uh, of Adam and Eve in the garden. That's symbolic of that. Father's denied you. Abandon, you know, cast you out of the garden. You know, an outcast, you've got to go and find your own way from this, you know, heavenly state. Uh, so that's, you know, that's how the ego works. And it projects the responsibility onto God instead of saying, but actually this is me. I've done this all. And so I can just change my mind. God never denied me at all. In fact, God has no knowledge that I'm even separate because there's no separation. In perfect love or oneness, there's no idea of separation. So how can, how can what is perfect love even have a concept of denial? Yeah. So it's insane. Uh, yeah. that, that concept of God is, is the false God. It's the ego's version of God. So it's just, it's just projection. Whatever, whatever you think you've done, um, you then project outwards and you go, it's not me, it's been done to me. That's, that's the, the, the victim identity of the ego. Yeah. Number four is a bit complex as well. What you experience when you deny your father is still for your protection. The power of your will cannot be lessened without the intervention of God against it. And any li limitation on your power is not the will of God. Um, what you experience when you deny your father is still for your protection. Because hmm. our minds have power. So the, the answer to the problem is not, is not to diminish your power, the power of your will, the power of your mind. Because you can't, you can't, you know, if it's created with all power, and then you can't limit that power. It's, it's an all-powerful all source. Yeah. So any limitation on your power is not the will of God. God being all, you know, the source of all power. So saying the power of your Lord can, cannot, be, cannot be lessened. So therefore, your, um, your vigilance is necessary. You need to use your mind correctly. But if you experience pain, suffering, sickness, and death when you deny your father or your source, that's actually still for your protection because it's showing you the power of your mind and it's showing you that you're out of accord with God's oh, will. Okay. okay. So that's the only way back. It's like, well, if you experience that pain and suffering, then there's a call to return. There's a call to, to return your mind to the father or to the source. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Which is always, you know, that's always the call. In, in, in all the ego's miscreations, there's the call for love. There's a call to return your mind. Yeah. It's still happening for your protection, even though it doesn't seem that way. Yeah. But you just have to remember that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's happening for me. It's happening for me so I can, I can return my mind to source. That's, that's the program. If I'm suffering, then I have a good motivation to do that. So yeah. The more I suffer, the more motivated I am to find some relief from the suffering, to find peace. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Good. About that. Uh, I don't know. I really must. Uh, I leave now. I, I had uh, just to, to really help my sons with some homeworks and they yeah. really are falling asleep, but didn't anticipate it was going to be this long. Yeah, sure. But really <clears throat> great. Well, thank you. I pre appreciate it. Better uh, prepared with time uh, next yeah. time. Uh, yeah, well, let's have a chat tomorrow. Um, yeah. Just to wrap this up. I'll, I'll give you a call in the afternoon. Not a problem. You're most uh, welcome to join these sessions. So I do a yeah. three week trial. You can join all the sessions. 
you can jump into the program, you can join the live sessions, you can get recordings, um, more than you've been getting because uh, I've just given you a taste on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. email, etc. cetera, um, and you know, see if it works for you. Okay. We'll so set in the tomorrow. Thank you so much, Kim right. uh, and, and, and John. Uh, okay. Cheers. Have, have yourself Lovely a to meet you. Right. Hope to see you soon. Yeah. Definitely. See you soon. Thanks, Thanks for you. Cheers, John. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so your peace lies in its limitlessness. Limit the peace you share and your Capital self must be unknown to you. Be altered to God is part of you because the light he created is one with him. Would you cut off a brother from the light that is yours? You would not do so if you realize that you can darken only your own mind. As you bring him back, so will you return. That is the law of God, the protection of the wholeness of his son. Yeah, again. Does that speak to you, Kim? Mm. Limit the peace you share and yourself must be unknown to you. Every altar to God is part of you. Because the light he created is one with him. So your friend is as much part of the light as you are. Mm. Would you cut it off a brother from the light that is yours? You would not do so if you realize that you can darken only your own mind. As you bring him back, so will you return. Oh, so this is your own salvation. As you bring your friend back to sanity, so will you return as well. And so bring it back through forgiveness. Yeah. And your own peace, you know, limit the peace you share and yourself must be unknown to you. Mm. So you limit the peace you share because you're feeling stressed and you're limiting the peace you share. So then yourself, capital self, is unknown to you. And what did I say yesterday? I said, I promise you, you're going to get some answers. And, and this... this uh, Section just speaks completely to it, doesn't it? Mm, it does. That's how it works. Now you show up, the Holy Spirit gives you the answer. Would you cut so off a good. brother from the light that is yours? Mm -hmm. What was that? No, I'm just reading. Would you cut off a brother from the light that is yours? No. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make sense if it's a, a shared light as you bring him back so will you return so this is for your own salvation mm -hmm. and hers you know, it's a it's a it's a joint project you've obviously got some kind of uh, stuff you need to work out soul they call it soul contract and stuff mm -hmm. you need to work out but uh, fortunately, you know, you, you know the way. These teachings are very clear as to how you should approach it. For the protection of the wholeness of his son. Okay, so we do number four. It's John's turn. Only you can deprive yourself of anything. Do not oppose this realization, for it is truly the beginning of the dawn of light. Remember also that the denial of this simple fact takes many forms. And these you must learn to recognize, to oppose steadfastly without exception. This is a crucial step in the reawakening. The beginning phases of this reversal are often quite painful 
or as blame is withdrawn from without, there is a strong tendency to harbour it within. It is difficult at first to realise that this is exactly the same thing. There is no distinction between within and without. That's interesting. That the, the beginning phase of this reversal are often quite painful, but this blame is withdrawn from without those strong tendency to harbour it within. As yeah. blame is withdrawn from without, there is strong ten. Ah, okay, strong tendency to harbour it. Hmm. In. So you blame yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Which is exactly the same thing. It's just guilt. Yeah. Self-blame yeah. or blaming others. It's yeah. the source of it is guilt. It's still hanging on to it, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. No, you can deprive yourself of anything. So, Kim, only you can deprive yourself of the light in this situation. That's the realization. It's like, it's up to me. I decide, am I, am I going to accept the light or am I going to accept the darkness? Darkness is being shown to me. It's coming at me. You know, text stuff's bombarding me, but only I can deprive myself of my connection to the light by giving these things a reality by honoring them by allowing them to influence my mind and take me into a dark space why is it I'm, my stomach is starting to flare up what is right now you're fighting <laughs> what right now yes so reading this paragraph yes well actually maybe before then but the just flare up as, as in what some kind of the that anxiety that yeah this physical discomfort almost pain anxiety feeling but it's quite strong yeah okay so just observe it breathe observe sensation emotion and then you ask why okay so what's the core belief What's the core belief that, it's, that, 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 that is uh, protecting? A lack of love. Yeah, okay, keep going. So what is that? So there's a, there's a lack of love going on. But who's responsible for that lack of love? Yeah, I suppose myself. Exactly. It's not Tracy. It's not anyone else. It's you. Only you can deprive yourself of anything. She can't deprive you of anything. It's more showing, I suppose, what does it do? Show the mirror. Yeah, remember, it's a projection of the ego. So if she's the mirror, and now all of those subconscious beliefs are projected out, and it seems to be outside of you. So now it seems to be something or someone is causing you to be upset, to be interbulated, to be disconnected from love. But actually, it's your own belief. That's the problem. It's your own It's your own choice to be separate and that's just being mm. mirror. so only you can deprive yourself of love she can't really do that to you mm. doesn't matter what she's doing that can't deprive you of your connection with your source of love because it's internal nothing she does actually has any effect on that But it's the, as he said, it's, it's truly the beginning of the dawn of light. Because you see this and you go, okay, I'm starting to see the program. I'm starting to see 
my way out of the ego's thought system. Because I'm doing this to myself. Not someone or something else. Mm. I'm created. Now the ego is really under threat. Because if it's self-created, then I can change my mind. I don't have to believe this. I don't have to do this anymore. Mm. If it's being done to you, then you're the victim. You can't do anything about it. It's happening to you, so it's someone else's fault. And he says, beginning phases are painful because as you withdraw blame from without, just blaming others, and there's a, a tendency to harbor it in your own mind and blame yourself. You know, I'm to blame and I'm guilty. Oh, and that's, that's very painful. We don't like guilt. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a false belief. Mm. There is no distinction between in and without. These are artificial distinctions. It's only the mind. There's guilt and fear and hatred and attack. On the one hand, that's the ego, love, peace, joy, forgiveness, and the other. And you've got to choose. Which thought system you're going to honor. And if you choose wrongly, if you choose the ego, then you deprive yourself of everything through your choice. Mm. Okay, so if you want to read number five. If your brothers are part of you and you blame them for your deprivation, you're blaming yourself. And you cannot blame yourself without blaming them. That is why blame must be undone, not seen elsewhere. Sorry, okay, sorry. That is why um, blame must be undone, not seen elsewhere. Lay it to yourself. And you cannot know yourself, for only the ego blames at all. Self-blame is therefore ego identification, and as much an ego defense as blaming others. You cannot enter God's presence if you attack his son. When his son lifts his voice in praise of his creator, you will hear the voice for his father. Yet the creator cannot be praised without his son, for their glory is shared and they are glorified together. I guess it is, let it highlight number six, you cannot enter God's presence if you attack his son. Hmm. Any attack. Any attack on the extension of love is an attack on God. So how can you enter into that presence when you're attacking it? Okay, anything else? Mm -mm. Move on to number six. Christ is at God's altar, waiting to welcome his son. Come holy without condemnation. For otherwise, you will believe that the door is barred and you cannot enter. The door is not barred, and it is impossible that you cannot enter a place where God would have you be. But love yourself with the love of Christ. 
but so does your father love you. You can refuse to enter, but you cannot bar the door that Christ holds open. Come unto me who hold it open for you. For while I love, it cannot be shut, and I live forever. God is my life and yours, and nothing is denied by God to his son. Very comforting passage. Hmm. The love of Christ. Do you understand what Christ means in this? In this passage, as well as in the, in the entire course, he uses the term a lot. Hmm? Sorry, John, go ahead. Uh, did, did you say, do we, do, do we know what Christ means or the love yeah. of Christ? No. No. The love of Christ. Hmm. We'll start with Christ. You know, what, is that, what does that term refer to? Uh, pureness, wholeness, our, our, inner, our inner being, our, our higher being. Yeah, it's your true self. Yeah. It's your true, Christ is your true self concept, capital S concept. So it refers to that self that knows that it's one, that oneness is what it is, that love is what it is, there's nothing else. But it's a, in this world, it's, it's a self concept. It's like the ego self-concept, because it has a self-concept. So Christ and that higher self, capital S, that he talks about, are kind of synonymous. Just different terms of the same thing. Mm. So that higher self-concept brings you into the experience of love and peace and joy, because... And you understand there's really only one son, there's one self, and I am it and everyone's it, then love and peace and joy come as a result of that belief. <coughs> so the belief of? That, that there's one self. Yeah. We share one self. We're not many selves. There's one self. And that self is the extension of this pure formless awareness we call God. So that self-concept, idea that I'm one and my brother's the one, that self-concept unites you with pure formless awareness. See? Holding that self-concept in your mind brings pure formless awareness into your mind. So ultimately, Christ in heaven, there's no Christ, but it's a very useful concept here in the idea in the in the domain of separation because it unites your mind with the pure formless awareness that is its source. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. So it's actually a very psychologically sophisticated theory. This it's talking about self-concept, and then there's pure formless awareness, which is God. It's beyond that. There's no, there's no self-concept in God. God is. But in our separated state, that higher self-concept is what unites you with God. Because now you experience that pure formless awareness in your experience, in your being. So it reunites you with your an experience of your being or your father. I said, God is my life and yours. Nothing is denied by God to his son. So that pure formless awareness, just, it just is. It doesn't deny anyone. It just is always. And, and that's the source of all love. Without pure formless awareness, you would, there would be nothing. That's, that's the ground of being. That's base reality. So now in our separated state, the Christ idea of who we are 
brings that experience into our into our experience. Okay, nearly done. So, John, if you can read number seven. Uh, God, uh, God's altar, Christ waits for the restoration of himself in you. God knows his son as wholly blameless as himself, and he is approached through the appreciation of his son. Christ waits for your acceptance of him as yourself and of his wholeness as yours. Christ is the Son of God who lives in his Creator and shines with his glory. Christ is the extension of the love and the loveliness of God, as perfect as his Creator and at peace with him. Okay, makes sense, given what we just discussed about Christ. Yeah, it's very much what we were just been saying, what you were just explaining, I think, John. Hmm. Hmm. So it's a self-concept that unites you with God, unites you with, that gives you that experience of pure formless awareness, love arising. Any other self-concept is going to split your mind. Yeah. And deny, deny love. Mm. Only in that self-concept of Christ, I am the son of God, the one self, only in that do we experience this divine love. Yeah. Okay. Kim, if you can read number eight. Okay. Please. Blessed is the Son of God whose radiance is of his Father, and whose glory he will he wills to share as his Father shares it with him. There is no condemnation in the Son, there is, not, then there is no condemnation in the Father. Sharing the perfect love of the Father and the Son must share what belongs to him. Otherwise, he will not know the Father or the Son. Peace be unto you who is rest in God and in whom the whole Sonship rests. Okay. Mm. Let me stand off you there. Sharing the perfect love of the Father, the Son must share what belongs to him. Otherwise, he will not know the Father or the Son. Hmm. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation in the Son. There's no condemnation in the Father. Mm. You condemn any part of the Sonship, then you condemn your, yourself and you deny God. Okay, any questions yeah. about that mm -hmm. or about the whole section? What does I, I missed what the title was? Oh, Inheritance of God's Son. The inheritance of God's Son. Inheritance, inheritance from God. Yeah. That's what he's referring to now. So our true self, Christ, is our inheritance. So we've just denied it, we've forgotten it. And now mm. we, can, we can remember it and claim our inheritance. 
Okay. Thanks. Okie dokie then. Uh, that brings us to the end of it. So um, should we do a quick meditation or do you want to end it here? It's five past 11, five past 10 your turn. We can take you through a 10 minutes, 10 minute meditation on this if you like. can do 10 minutes. Okay. John? Well, you guys are ahead of me, so uh, I'm going to go with what, uh, what you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. No problem. So, um, we're already asleep, so she's away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said she was feeling tired, so. Um, all right, just put you on mute. So, just sitting comfortably, feet shoulder width apart, back straight, cup your hands on your lap, close your eyes. And start off by breathing in, notice how the stomach rises, chest rises, subtle flow of air in through the nostrils. Clench your sphincter muscle. Let's lock the energy in. Feel the energy rising up your spine into your heart center. Bring one hand in your heart. Connecting with your heart space. Feeling that presence, that energy. Pulling it up into the crown of your head. Another sip of air. Pause at the top of the inhale. Bring to mind any dark thoughts or emotions. Something going on that's not light and love, it's not comfortable. Notice how it feels. Emotionally, physically, usually emotions show up as sensations in the body. So observe those sensations, breathe into them. Imagine you breathing in light. Say to yourself, the light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. Is someone else involved in the situations triggering thoughts and emotion just Breathe in the light. Brings peace to every mind, including yours. So feel that darkness dissipating. Imagine breathing the light into any areas of tension or darkness in your body. Smiling. The light is you, the light is in you. It brings peace to your mind. So as you exhale, it's going to blow out. Any dark thoughts and emotions, let go of the thoughts, emotions, the energy, just drop it all to the nothingness that it really is. All the stomach into the spine. All the last remaining are out. Say to yourself, my forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me. My forgiveness is the means by which I become aware of the light in the world light of the world in me. My forgiveness is the means by which the world is healed, together with myself. Let me then forgive the world, that it may be healed along with me. Smile at that thought as you breathe in. Imagine breathing the light in again. 
beautiful golden or white light flowing into stomach, your heart center, clench your sphincter muscle, and feel this light drawing up the spine all the way into the crown of your head, pausing at the top of the inhale. And then the light flowing into every pore, every cell, every muscle of your body, every part of your mind, every fiber of your being is in the light. And say to yourself, applying this idea to anyone who comes to mind with any kind of conflict in your life, say, to that person, let peace extend from my mind to yours. And name them. I share the light of the world with you. And name the person. Through my forgiveness, I can see this as it really is. So as you exhale, imagine sharing this light standing the peace from your mind to the other person's mind there's a sense of joining and that intention to share there's a joining nothing else to go nothing else to do just sink into the peace let it extend through you to this person and to all the world. And breathing in. Notice how the stomach rises, chest rises, subtle flow of air in through the nostrils, clench the sphincter muscle, draw the energy up the spine in a column of gold and a white light. What into stomach, the heart center, into front of your head, pause at the top of the inhale, smile. Remind yourself not to forget your function. So let me not forget my function. Say to yourself, I would not forget my function, which is forgiveness, because I would remember my capital self. I cannot fulfill my function if I forget it. And unless I fulfill my function, I will not experience joy that God intends for me. So breathe this joy in. Imagine it's infusing every pore, every cell, every muscle of your body, every corner of your mind, every fiber of your being. And then the joy of the light. Feel it, connect with it deeply. Say to yourself, let me not use any situation that's seemingly causing me any distress to hide my function from me. So just observe any thoughts and emotions that seem to be blocking the light. Say, let, let me not use this to hide my function from me. And I would use this situation as an opportunity to fulfill my function. And this may threaten my ego, but cannot change my function in any way. So exhale. Just releasing out through the mouth. So let it all go. Freeze of your breath. From the lower stomach into the spine. It's about the last remaining air out. And just rest here. 
and then peace and stars. Peace that passes all understanding that's been called. Peace that comes when you forgive, you remember your friendships. And only the light of the world brings us peace. To your mind and every mind through your forgiveness. So just sink into that peace. A couple of minutes of deep silence, 10 minute meditation. Mind yourself, there's really nowhere else to go. There's nothing else to do. Nothing else to think about. Just breathe, relax, be still and find the peace. Peace of God. That passes all understanding, it's being called. And just watch your breath, please relax, be still. And Sink into the peace. So the light of the world brings peace to my mind and to every mind through my forgiveness. Just feel that peace developing you. Comforting, warm, soft, gentle. Sink into it. Don't resist it. Just allow it to enfold you, envelop you completely, to wash through your mind. Washing away all thoughts of conflict, all pain and suffering, sickness and death. Just disappear in the peace of God. For the next two minutes of deep silence, just allow that to happen. And any thoughts seem to arise to disturb this peace. Just observe them casually. And then there are clouds just drifting by. They have no power to obscure. The eternal sky, the true awareness of the light that shines through it. So blow them away with the breeze of your breath and sink back into that clear blue sky. To a true awareness that the light of the world shine through that and bring you peace. And let that peace extend through your mind to every mind. To the whole, the one, the sunship for the next. Minutes of deep silence.
So just gently coming back. This deep peace into awareness of the body, the breath, senses, the world. On the count of three, you're going to open your eyes. So one, just breathing in. Noticing how the stomach rises, the chest rises. Subtle flow of air into the nostrils. Pausing at the top of the inhale. Smile, scan your mind. Notice any thoughts or emotions blowing on there. Going on, blowing through your mind. Just they at all negative, limiting, contracted, constricting. Notice them and blow them away, the breeze of your breath, dark clouds, no power at all, obscure the blue sky, the true awareness, the eternal light shines through the light of the world that brings peace to your mind and every mind through your forgiveness. Forgiveness is the letting go of the clouds in your mind dropping them to the nothingness they really are. So as you exhale, blow one of these clouds away and just releasing them to the breeze of your breath to the nothingness they really are. And the peace and stillness come when you do this. The peace of God shining in you and through you. Bring peace to every mind through your forgiveness. On the count of two, just notice the weight of your body pressing down into the chair, your feet touching the ground. Notice what you're feeling and touching your hands, subtle flow of air in your skin, perhaps breathing in. Noticing the smell of that air. Maybe there's a subtle taste in your mouth. Noticing what you're hearing. Without judgment. No name or judge or label. Any of your sense perceptions, allow them to be. So you start to recognize the ground of being deep stillness that underlies all your sense perceptions. It's beyond naming, judging, labeling, beyond form of any kind. And you're going to stay anchored in this deep peace for the rest of the evening. So it is said and so it is done. And on the count of three, open your eyes. Just Take a minute to look around, observing the same familiar objects in the room around you, but in this very still, calm, surrendered state. So don't name them, judge them, label them. Allow your eyes just to rest for a few seconds on something and then move on to something else. And then again, something else. And you should notice that your underlying awareness is the same irrespective of what your body's eyes perceive. It shows you that that awareness is true, that's eternal, that's unchangeable, and uh, it's not moved, not affected at all by the uh, shifting sands of time and space. Notice that state, that peace, carry it with you for the rest of the evening and hope it helps you to have a very deep sleep and uh, a very flowing day tomorrow until we, uh, we meet again. So thank you for joining the session and staying till the end. And um, namaste. Which means the peace of God in me acknowledges and honors that same peace.
in you. Thank you, John.